My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Let's whisper something to the Lord very quickly. If you know Jesus, talk to him. <laughs> talk to the Lord. Ask him to minister to you tonight. It's very easy to get to know a man. It's very easy to get familiar with the ministry of a man. And when you listen to that man, you can virtually tell everything he will do as the meeting progresses. You know when he's on the ground floor. You know when he so ascends. You know when he enters into the spirit. You can master the operation of the spirit of God in the soul of a man. You can even write a treatise about it. But most times, a lot of us, we suffer gross scarcity in the knowledge of Jesus. Do you not wonder how the men you know and everything you know about them vanishes from your mind the moment you are in trouble? The only thing that we stay, the only thing that we walk, through, walk you through darkness, it is the amount of God that you have apprehended in your soul. No matter how special a man is, no matter how beautiful the anointing of God is on the life of a man, he is still a man. That's why they are called men of God. They are not God of men. But most of us don't know God. We know men, so we pursue them from place to place. We pursue them from state to state, territories to territories, nations to nations. But we have not taken time to appraise ourselves. Paul say, examine yourself to see whether ye be in the faith. Whether that Christ be formed in you. Except your mind is reprobate. The goal is not the man you know. He said, did Paul die for you? Did Cephas die for you? Did Apollos die for you? It was Jesus that died. It was Jesus that was crucified. You may come to a point in your life where your greatest desire is to please a man. So you are praying, there is no connection with Jesus, but suddenly as apostle walks through the hall, then you feel something, you feel an emotion, and you say, we are weak. He says, if you faint in the day of trouble, your strength is small. Can you talk to Jesus? The knowledge of God is scarce in our day, in our time. The Bible said in the day of Samuel, He said those days the word of the Lord was scarce. Not many people knew him. There were many priests. Eli was a priest. He was an old priest. At the time he was the only patriarch that was in Israel. But Eli had lost alignment. The sons of Eli had lost alignment. So the voice of God was scarce. There was no king in Israel. There was no judge. There was no prophet. All Israel had at the time was a priest. Cardinal. In the responsibility of a priest is to interpret the law. A priest is supposed to be a master of the Torah. And by wisdom, tap into the vote of knowledge that is encapsulated in the Torah. And then bring perspective to a generation as to what God wants to do part time. But that kind of knowledge is not a function of mental ego. What is expected of a priest is by the sacrifice of alignment be drawn into the vote of knowledge that comes from Zion. So that when the priest talks, it is the voice of God you hear. Unfortunately, Eli had lost alignment. And the Bible said the voice of God was cast in Israel. The hope that Israel had was predicated upon the fact that a man needed to arise on the landscape that knew how to enter into the spirit. 
A man that will hear the voice of God fresh was the only salvation that Israel needed. And Samuel was that man that rose. You know, Eli knew the voice of God, but the voice of God was cast. When God called Samuel, he ran to Eli. When he went the third time, Eli said, whenever you hear the voice again, tell him, thy servant is here. He knew the voice of God, but the voice of God was cast. Does it not occur to you how much we know the move of the Spirit? We know the power of God. We can, we can literally discern the movement of God in a meeting. But when was the last time you heard the voice of God? There's no relationship. We are religious men. We understand the cliche. We understand the motion. When was the last time God spoke to you about your life and your destiny? Is it possible that you have been walking by trial and error? Is it possible that you have been walking based on assumptions? You check here, check there, and you say, this must be what God is saying. <laughs> we guess. We keep guessing. When you cast your mind back, you will realize it's been 10 years. You are on the same mountain. Examine yourself to see whether ye be in the faith. Whether Christ be formed in you, except you be reprobate. The psalmist say, count your blessings. Name them one by one. That is a man that is walking progressively with God. He knew when all he had was the knowledge of the scriptures. He knew when he moved and he began to hear the voice of God. He knew when the power of God began to move through him. He knew when the anointing was not just about people falling down, but the needs of men could be met. He's a man that grows. He's progressive. Because there's a voice that constituted a compass. That compass was his tool of navigation. But a lot of us... <laughs> I love men of God. I love, I love them. I love Apostle. I honor him. But my destiny is hanging on the voice of God. And we amount to nothing except as I learn how to hear the voice of God. Because men are men. No matter how good they are, they are men. They are limited. Their reality is factored into time, space, and matter. What gives them an edge is the secret they understand. The technology by which they know how to tap into the vote of life. That is what makes them different. And the goal of the fivefold ministry is not to become a compass for your life. The goal of the fivefold is to get you to rise and grow in maturity. He says so that you are no longer tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You come to a point where you know Jesus for yourself. You come to a point where you grow in stature in the spirit. The energy you function with becomes the life of God. But when we look around us, many people following many people. We celebrate them so much until they become superstars. But we check our life. We have followed some men for 10 years. There is no difference. Talk to Jesus. Tell him you want him. Paul say, if I be a servant of man, then I am not the servant of Jesus. This is not supposed to suggest rebellion. This is not supposed to suggest disloyalty. This is telling you where his fellowship is fused. Where his commitment derives from. Talk to Jesus. You see, a lot of us don't even know how to worship. When we are worshiping, we are waiting for a good music. Then we close our eyes very hard. You are still in the hall. You don't ascend by closing your eyes. You ascend because you are carried by the Spirit. He said, holy men of God. He said, they spake as they were carried. They were carried. They were carried. John was in the Isle of Patmos, in the midst of challenges. He said, I heard a sound as of a trumpet. And as he turned, he was carried into the spirit. It was not an act in the flesh. They didn't need to close their eyes. Ezekiel said, I was among the captives by the river Kaba. And I saw visions of God. He was sitting by the side of the river. His eyes were open. He was numbered among captives. He said, I was by the river Kaba. I saw visions of God. The guy was not praying. He understood when the heavens opened. He knew the movements in the spirit. That's a man of the spirit. That's a man of the spirit. Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I saw visions of God. You don't ascend by closing your eyes. You have done it for many years. Did you not notice that when your challenges come, you close your eyes and when you open it, your challenge is still there. Because the power that shifts things it's not in the act. It's in the spirit. Talk to Jesus. We do the same thing over and over and over. And we expect a different result. When was the last time you appraised yourself? 
I was here yesterday when Apostle was ministering. I just went to the back and I sat down. I began to think about my life. Every day you come, this man speaks like somebody who lives in heaven. And all you enjoy is to come under that atmosphere. You just feel the euphoria. You enjoy the presence. Where are you with Jesus? What is your work with Jesus? You are in a clan where we are. This is, this is a clan of people of prayer. But every day you come to pray is still a struggle. When will the spirit of prayer come upon you? We need to hear the voice of God. Said the voice of God is full of majesty. The voice of God is upon many waters. It divided the flames of fire. It causes the hind to carve. It discovered the forest. The voice of God. The secret of invincibility is in your dexterity in picking the voice of God. That's what makes a man invincible. That's what makes your challenges keep like rams before you. It skips, it skips, it skips like ram. majesty we've come to be instructed even tonight we've come to be schooled in your ways we ask oh God that beyond the words that will come let there be a supply of your spirit we ask that there be a quickening on our inside that we carry us to heights in Zion where men are formed where the spirit of just men is made perfect. Where the callings of men become visible. Where giftings become a natural heritage of mankind. We ask that you quicken us. We ask that you strengthen us with might by your spirit in the inner man. And we ask, O oh God, that in our vessels you will find worthy ambassadors of Zion. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. God bless you. You see, when Reverend Tony called me last night and said I was going to be engaging, I was in the room with Brother Victor. We were studying the scriptures. You see, in the month of February, we decided that um, we've heard a lot of things and we sense that there is a window that is opened. 
And uh, we understood that it would be needful for us to sustain a new kind of mentality in order to enter into what God was opening. And the best way we saw or understood to reprogram our mind was to feed it with new sets of data. Because you see, the mind is like a processor. There is nothing spiritual or evil about the mind. The mind is just a processor of the kinds of information it is fed with. If you hear negative stories for a long time now, after three months, you begin to think like that. And if you hear positive things, especially spirit-energized communications for a long time, you begin to process positively. That's how the mind works. So we said we were going to bombard the mind until we compel it not to think any other thing that it was educated with before, but to begin to think and talk the world. So we embarked on, we created a very strange timetable, very strange timetable. You know, that one is our body. But one of the things we decided to do was to read the New Testament in every seven days. So it would take you many hours of study. And then sometimes, because of the activities in the day, you are compared to read through the night. So it was that activity we were engaging when your call came in that I was going to engage. And instantly, as we were talking, an anointing came into the room. And we began the service. <laughs> and the very odd trances that... <laughs> That was meant for this meeting. He came down in the room there. And <laughs> the power of God that came to the room was so intense. So I told Ogbe that today is a day of glory. It's, it's going to be a night of glory. <laughs> you know, four days ago we were at the NCCF house, family house, to share with them for 50 minutes. And when they gave me the mic, as I just lifted my voice, the power of God began to move. And we couldn't share the word of God that day because... The power of God moved until the time was over. I had to constrain the leadership to speak. But when I went to went out today, came back preparing for the meeting, the Holy Ghost began to breathe on my mind. And they said, go and share with them precepts, principles, so that they can practice. Because a lot of people are weak on the inside. They need to become strong. You see, one of the reasons you see the move of God, the Lord blesses us here with the move of God, amidst other things, is to make it easy for you to begin to believe spiritual things. When you see the power of God continuously, it becomes easy for you to believe in the move of the power of God. But if you must grow in God, you need to journey beyond moving. The word of God must become the raw material of your spirit. The word of God must become the substance of your meditation and contemplation. You see, Apostle was sharing yesterday, he said it's good to pray. He said, but at most you pray in the morning for some hours. But when you go out, what you do for the next 24 hours is what determines the fate and the orientation of your life. When you are not flooded with the word of God, as you are done with your activity. Sometimes it doesn't take up to 30 minutes to diffuse everything you have incubated yourself with. That's why you come for a meeting, the power of God is strong. You even wept in the meeting. But before you got to your house, everything diffused. And then the day returns to normal. Because you are not taught how to manage the presence. You don't know how to practice and to keep the presence. And oftentimes when you are in a challenge, you will notice that all the atmosphere of glory you were under, you will forget it. Your mind will begin to search desperately, looking for something to anchor on. And then you will search and find nothing. You see most of our sisters here, when they are in the theater to give birth, in the midst of that pain, they begin to search for the word of God. They are looking for something to hold on to. It's like a man drowning. You are drowning by the river bank. You are looking for something to hold. Then you struggle. You discover there is nothing. Now the energy you had in you before you began to drown, you will dissipate all of it trying to stay afloat. When the energy goes, then you will drown. 
So most times when you pray and you build capacity in prayer, but you ask, the word of God is cast in your spirit, there will be nothing for your faith to anchor on. So when you want to make a serious decision, you begin to run looking for somebody to decide for you. Because the word that should instruct you is not there in your spirit. So when you find a man who is weak, it's because there is scarcity of anchor in his spirit. So it is high time to beat down on the euphoria and to begin to find out the substance of the word of God so that we can become strong. You see, we, we pray here all the time. But if I ask us question, what are the spiritual principles that you practice as a Christian? You will discover that a lot of us, we just float. We come for the prayer meeting, we are done. We float all through the day until we come for the prayer meeting again. So it becomes a challenge. Did you not notice that if our lives were affecting people, and everything we do here was actually speaking in our lives, this very meeting, we sustain a different tempo. But most times you stroll out of your house, nobody even notices that you are a child of God. Nobody even notices anything is happening around you. So you stroll in and out, and then you motivate yourself that you are praying. If the prayer begins to affect the texture of your soul, something will happen. It will begin to illuminate your environment. It will begin to dominate your environment. Because the first thing it will do is to dominate you. And then when you are colonized, you become a tool for colonizing your environment. Most of us have challenges. Sometimes last year I was attacked. My health was attacked. And suddenly fear began to creep in my heart. And I sat down. I said, what? I can't tell you the number of healings I saw last year. Healings. I'm not talking about I had back pain. I had headache. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about bones. Broken bones. Returning Somebody had an accident from a car accident. The hip, after operating, the hip left the joint. He was in excruciating pain for more than one year, six months. He was in the meeting. I didn't even pray. The bone returned. Those are the kind of testimonies I'm talking about. Deafness. Unstopped. I was in Wukari. They brought somebody from the theater into the meeting with drip. Instantly, everything left him. This was not a meeting I prepared for. We were going for a awake, spiritual awakening in BSU and Apostle came and said, you go to Ukari tomorrow for a three days meeting. And we saw all of this. But my health was attacked and the first thing that came out of my spirit was fear. It dawned on me that even some of us that by mercy have seen a measure of the anointing, the anointing is not enough to preserve us. So you can be anointed and die. It behoves every Christian to come back and sit down, put the subjectivity aside, and begin to chew on the word of God. You find out different area of your life where you want to make progress and find out what is your anchor in those areas. That was when for the first time I consciously gathered scriptures on healing and began to eat them. You know, when you connect with the apostle and his spirit rests on you, you can come and you will open the scriptures. You will talk for two hours. Before you get halfway, the whole place will scatter. People will literally be vibrating. <laughs> but what will make you is the word that is alive in your spirit. For the first time, I gathered healing scriptures and I began to meditate. I started reading, memorizing them and talking them to myself. Because I knew the reason I was attacked in the first place was because there was a vent. There was an opening. And any area of your life where you see an attack is an area of the deficiency of the knowledge of Jesus. He said, according as his divine power has given unto us everything that pertained to life and godliness. 
But he said, it is through the epignosis of him that has called us to glory and virtue. So any area of your life where you cannot see the manifestation of the fullness of life, then there is ignorance in the epignosis, in the knowledge of him that has called you to glory and virtue. So the first thing you need to do even before praying is to renew your mind. Because there is a gap that the enemy has discovered and is exploiting it. Renewal of mind is one of the heaviest molecules in the kingdom. If your mind is not renewed, you can pray about something for 10 years, you will not have any result. Because it is your mind that conducts the life and the power of God. You see, the fullness of God is already in your spirit. I'm saying this because I'm going somewhere. I want to talk to us about healing. Because by the time I'm rounding up, I'm deliberately keeping the place calm. By the time I'm rounding up, we will consciously engage those who are sick. And then we will check the progress. You know, I was in the meeting. More than 50 persons went under the power when I was praying. And then as I called for testimonies, not up to 10 were healed. And then I asked myself, these people that fell down, what was happening? I was praying for the sick. More than 50 people went under the power. Not up to 10 were healed. And I discovered that sometimes your greatest undoing is your subjectivity. It is easy to follow the rhythm of an atmosphere. But what really changes you is the tangibility of the power of God that enters into your life. You can fall under the power, your business will be dying. Something was entering to you to quicken you with the capacity to speak to your business, to move forward. But that is where we are grossly lacking most of the times. And that is why the movement of the Pentecost, the Pentecostal movement is called a charismatic movement. Somebody is sick, he falls down ten times in ten meetings. He is sick. He goes back and he says, Oh boy, the power of God. No, the, the power of God you need is not the slaying power. You have a challenge. You need to learn to exercise your faith to deal with that issue. But the undoing of the charismatic movement is the enjoyment of the atmosphere. The pedestrian of the euphoria of the meeting beyond the tangibility that is happening beneath and only few find it. So it's important for us to renew our minds. Because if our minds are not renewed, we will not make the most of God. Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, he said, I beseech you, dearly beloved, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And he said, do not conform yourself to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. What Paul was trying to say is, if you want your experiences to be different from the experiences of the world and the people therein, you must get your mind renewed so that you can be metamorphosed. The word transformation is metamorphosed. Molecularly, you are altered. If you are sick... Something must first of all happen to your mind that will make you not to think sickness. Else you will pray loud but have no result. Because God does not only hear the prayers that come from your mouth. He hears the one that projects through your thoughts. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, it said God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. He didn't say ask and think. If I say sit here or here, it means both here and here are equal. So anyone you choose is okay. So when you are talking and thinking, if you are talking healing, but you are thinking sickness, you are thinking fear, you are thinking death, you have neutralized on a very equal scale what you are uttering. It shows you the supremacy of the mind in kingdom economy. And the only tool that renews the mind is the word of God. You see, we have even come to a point now where we come for a meeting and then we say, oh boy, that meeting, they, 
Well, 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 yeah, fine. Because people didn't fall down shouting and your emotion was not, your emotions were not tilted and you were not excited. So we bring our discernment to the level of our feelings. But the Bible said that just shall live by faith. Faith is the product of the word of God internalized. So he said that just shall live by the products of the word of God. But we live by feelings. Be it transformed. Paul said, I fear less you get beguiled. You get beguiled the way Satan beguiled Eve from the simplicity of the gospel. Somebody said if the gospel is not simple, you can't preach it to all the world. How can children hear it? How can the elders hear it? You see, we talk, we, we, we are people that God has helped us to understand mysteries. So we talk a lot of mysteries. Don't get me wrong. But I'm telling you, in order to zero in, to, to zero in on what you need, you must know the exactness of the facts that are there. The, the, the exact thing that the word says. You must zero in on it. Else you will have all you need, but you will not receive from it. And you will do a lot of gymnastics. This evening I want to help us by the word to renew our minds. Some of these scriptures you may have heard about them, but you don't exactly know what they say. I assure you. You know, there are lots of scriptures you quote because you heard somebody quote it. Your faith can't be built like that. <laughs> because you don't know exactly what the scripture is saying. Uh, you, you know, when you guys go to 100 level, they, I heard they usually tell you ahead of time in 100 level about cadaver. In 200 level. That's where they give you the dead. You begin, medical people will begin to how far, how the, what. You know, they, they tell you about it. You can even go and gist somebody about what you do in 200 level. How they bring the dead and say all kinds of... But the day you confront with the dead for the first time in the lab, you, you notice there were some motions. Your heart began to come close to your throat as if it would jump. <laughs> your brain shut down. It stopped working. Be, because when you see for yourself, then you enter into experience. We know a lot of things about the word of God, but we don't know it. That's why we are troubled. People who have grown in God, they know the importance of these things. If you check the content of Paul's prayer, then you will understand what Paul holds very high. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 to 20, he said that the Lord, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's Paul praying for a church. There were many things the church needed. He was praying for wisdom and knowledge in the revelation of Jesus. He said that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened so that you will know the riches of the gospel. Because it's possible for you to even preach the gospel you won't know the riches. You can preach healing but you will die of sickness. You can preach power, but you will die of the scarcity of power. The only way you can come into understanding of the riches of the gospel is that you will be furnished with the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. The spirit of wisdom is, is, is Sophia. It is the understanding of the precepts, the principles that governs a reality. When you have wisdom about something, you know how it works. So you need to know how the word of God works. You need to know how Jesus as a person works. You know the Bible said God taught Moses had the ways of God. The children of Israel had the, the acts of God. They knew the power of God. They could talk about it. But Moses knew how it works. So when Paul is talking about wisdom, he said you need to be furnished with an understanding of the technology of the oppression of the life and the power of the Christos. And he said the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. The word enlightened is the word for tizo. It means let there be an illumination in your mind. Your mind is suddenly illuminated. Then when you hear the love of God, as you are going, one dimension opens. That one rests with you for three days. By the time you are rounding up that one, then another dimension opens. Then another dimension opens. 
You remember our best testimony from last year? A, a song just came. He said, this God, the big go. And then he was singing it. At first he was enjoying the song. Suddenly light came. And this is not a song for you to enjoy. This song is trying to bring an awareness to you that God is big. And the moment ah, it downed on him, suddenly somebody came and gave him tight. This is not a pastor. He said, sir, please take tight. He turned to go and that person came and said, sir, can you please manage this seed? He has been enlightened. Illumination has come. So when he's singing that song now, he's, he's not... You may see him singing it and crying. It's not the melody. You know, most of us are used to melody. When we say, Ale, 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 then you. The melody. No. When a man is illuminated, he journeys beyond the feeling. He leaves the euphoria. He enters into the depth. When he's singing, this God is big. He's actually seeing the magnitude, the abilities, and the capacities of God. But you need to slow down. Before you get to that level. You know you may have challenge and you are talking to God. And then this thing will happen. This thing. Then the Holy Ghost comes and is whispering how it will happen. But you didn't hear. He will wait again. You go and pray again. When you are illuminated and you are hiding. He will come again and say okay do like this. Do like this. That, the time he's talking. That time you are already gone. So you will do it for three years. Maybe the day God will help you is that day maybe you were going somewhere, you hit your leg somewhere, you lie down for three days. That time you lay down, you became calm. Then the Holy Ghost will come and say, that thing I was telling you five years ago, <laughs> this is what it means. <laughs> it's called illumination, for tizo. You will be illuminated. That's when you wake up and then the Holy Ghost say, pray about your business around 1 a.m. in the morning. You don't know why. <laughs> Maybe that's when your angels come from heaven. It, that's not a doctrine. That is fortizo. It's illumination. You are pregnant and then when you reach the fourth month, you say, don't drink water in the morning. If you don't hear that thing, the day of delivery, make sure you gather enough intercessors. Uh, because the power you will generate before you undo what you should have handled by not drinking water, that power will be very big. <laughs> well, you know the one giving us testimony how a tipper came and the whole tipper turned on. <laughs> it took him, God helped him to dig through the whole sand that a tipper. <laughs> Maybe if there was an instruction that if he had illumination, he would have, there wouldn't have been need to dig the whole tipper. And thank God that that day you had strength. It's illumination. All of us have healing in Christ. The difference is the mentality. And it's not something you use it. You will struggle and then you will lie down. Wake up, struggle again. It's not bad. Some of us, when we were younger, we were playing PS. You know, when you are playing PS, there's a spot that you come around the angle 90. If you shoot from there, you will score. Usually, when you are approaching that spot, your leg begins to do like this. Uh, this one won't help. If you want to get that spot, master the keys. Because what you are doing with the keys is equivalent to a kick. Have you played Sega? When you want to punch the guy, if they are punching you, you'll be doing like this. Uh, this one won't help. This is in another dimension. The guy fighting is in the screen. And the only connection between you and the guy in the screen is the button. So what you want to do by the power of the Holy Ghost is not on your body. It's in the spirit. The connection is the fate of the Son of God. And it comes by your apprehension of the world. That's why you see most of us shout a lot. Uh, but you may shout and your emotions will be stirred. But the, what you want to move, the spirit that, want, that should move it is in another dimension. If you don't make contact with him, forget. You will shout like that until you go home, take Panadol, come and shout again. The renewal of the mind is so important by the word of God. To what extent is your mind renewed? Can you just check quickly? That thing you are trusting God for, what do you know about it? By what technology is it done? You know, it's easy to hear apostles' mighty stories of exploit, and then as you are hearing it, sometimes as you are, you are, you, you want to charge. Uh, no. <laughs> My brother, there is something the man knows. That thing you are trusting God for, what do you know about it? You need to dig. You need to dig deep. It's a renewing of the mind. I will show us a few scriptures about healing. 
so that we can practice it here this evening. How many persons feel discomfort, sickness, or whatever? You feel sick or something, pain, sickness. Don't worry, just lift your... Faith is not the denial of fact. He said, he, <laughs> he called those things that be not as though they were. He didn't say, he called those things that be as though they were not. That's not what he's saying. It's not denial of fact. It's refusal of fact to have dominion over you. Alright? How many of us feel discomfort, pain, any form of sickness? So, when we finish this night, we will practice it. If it doesn't work, then there are three possibilities. One, either that we don't have what it takes to handle it. Or two, what we are preaching is not accurate. Because one of the responsibilities of the Holy Spirit is to bear witness to the world. But let me assure you, it's not your fault. Because for you to come means you have enough faith. <laughs> you see, Catherine Koma was provoked. She goes for faith meetings, healing meetings, and a lot of people will go back, they will not be healed. And then she asked herself, what is wrong? Then the preachers will say, well, you, you don't have enough faith, the Lord will help you with faith, and then you will be... She couldn't understand. How can somebody who is sick and helpless struggle through the pain? Some of them travel for 10 hours, and they come for the meeting. They lie in the stadium from morning to evening. And then you come, you say they don't have faith. Oh God, oh God, we have to redefine faith. <laughs> because if it's faith, this one's dead, it's not lacking. You have more than enough faith. I assure you. What you need is an understanding of how it works. That is how the things of God works. And that's what we learn. We will keep practicing until we enter into it. And we sit there. The Bible said the labor of the foolish wearied every one of them because they know not how to enter the city. The problem is not that the city is not there. The problem is not that they cannot enter. They know not how. So they labor to enter but they don't know how. I will show us a few things. Some of these scriptures are very simple scriptures. Most of us know them. But the problem is that we don't have the discipline to stay on them. You know, if a doctor gives you a drug, he said, take this drug for six months. Every day, morning, afternoon, and evening, you will take it like that for six months. If you miss one, you want to die. But when you come to spiritual thing, you think it's magic. No, it's not magic. It's, there is a how it works. I want to show you how it works and debunk the many things they told you that have made it impossible for you to receive what is rightly yours in God. Most of the things you were told are wrong. So you judge yourself, you, you put yourself under guilt, you make yourself feel it's your fault, it's a lie. I have studied a lot, a lot. And when I study about something, I study from somebody that have the proof. Because I can come now and show you 10 principles of becoming a millionaire. The first question you ask me is not that does this thing work. Ask me how much do you have in your account. Mm -hmm. If I don't have up to 1 million, that, that principle that should go, out, go and practice it first. So when I, the things I want to share with you, I studied them, I have practiced some of them, and I studied them from those that it works in their life. They, they have the proof. And since I started practicing them, I started seeing mind-blowing things. The word of God is not difficult. It's not difficult. God does not just want to give you healing. He wants you to walk in divine health. Hallelujah. Are we together? You want, to, you want to hear those things? Are you going to practice them? You know this, I need have house meeting, so it's not meeting to come and fly. And, mm. Will you practice those things? They are simple, like I told you, but you need to believe them and practice them. Kenneth Hagin said something. He said, when you want to grow, you don't eat food and check the length of your leg. He said, keep eating. One day you come and wear the trouser you wore six months ago and you discover the trouser is now a jumper. Because growth is a process. Are we together? And then you don't eat pounded jam today and say, I'm tired of eating starch. I won't eat starch again till next year. Oh God, you will die of lack of energy. So you will eat it and keep, you will keep eating it. You will keep. So, the first thing I want to show you is that when you pray for healing, or when you desire healing, it's not coming from heaven. 
you already have healing in your spirit. That's how simple it is. You already have healing in your spirit. You know this is a healing service. I want to show us some of the basic principles. You already have healing in your spirit. The totality of everything God has to offer. Power, healing, signs, wonders, miracles. Is in, is in himself. When God wants to give you something, he doesn't pick it from the moon and give you. It's in himself. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. It said, Christ has been made unto us. You see, he was all of those things. But in order for you to participate in the experience, he said he was made unto you. Wisdom, righteousness. But the list continues. You know why? Because Christ is the culmination of the totality of everything that is in the Godhead. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 2 verse 19, it said, He pleased the Father that the fullness of the Godhead should dwell in Him bodily. So everything God has to offer is encapsulated in the person called Jesus. So when God gave you Jesus, He gave you everything. In Ephesians 1, 3, these are simple scriptures you know. But as we go on, I will show you why it's not working. In Ephesians 1, 3, it said, Thanks be to God, who has given us all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Healing is a spiritual blessing. But it's in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. And the only part of you that is currently in heavenly places is your spirit. So you have healing in your spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, if you read from verse 17 down to 19, it shows you the mystery of how you can enter into the experience of another person. It's by joining together. So he said, if you join your body to a harlot... You are one with the harlot. He said the same way. Whoever is joined with the Lord. He said he is one spirit. It's difficult now to. If we can find your spirit. It will be difficult to separate your spirit. From the spirit of God. There is so much oneness. That you cannot tell. Which is you and which is God. So the fullness of God. Is not just in your spirit. But you have become one with the fullness of God. So if there is healing in Jesus, you have healing in your spirit. But this thing will take you, it will take the spirit of revelation for you to get to understand it. So most times when we pray, we don't know whether we should ask healing to come from heaven or we should bring out healing from our spirit. So our minds are divided. But if you stay on the scriptures, after some time, it will become real to you. It will become more and more. You know, the Bible said, we all, with unveiled faces, beholding as in a glass, the image of the Lord. He said, we are changed into that image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of God. So you look upon this for a long time, so that you are reprogrammed. I was talking with Tim Rita the other time. And when somebody was talking about a challenge that he or she had, and then when we went out, she told me when she was talking, she was just seeing the cause of the thing and how her body was, I think that was about last year now. The person was, maybe you come, you are complaining of malaria. What she's seeing is how, what's the, what's the name of the, how the plasmodium is working in your cells. The, the protocol of the plasmodium, how it's dominated. That's what she is seeing. You know, when somebody talk malaria here, you, you, at best, if you vis- if you visualize it, you see the person lying down shaking. They are seeing something more molecular, because by reason of medical practice, you have been trained to think like that. The same way you will look on the world until it will make you, it will reprogram your mind. A point will now come. There will be assurance that no. 
there is healing in me. The moment that assurance is born, your mind will begin to traffic a different energy. You know, your thought in this realm is intangible. And that is because your mind operates in a realm higher than the natural. The soulish realm is called the preternatural realm. It's also an invincible dimension. So when you think, when thoughts project from you in the natural, it's intangible. But if you go to the preternatural realm and you begin to see those thoughts, they are actually tangible substances. That's why demons can perceive. They can peep into your soul and perceive. And when they want to hold you, they want to hold you in bondage. Is the soulish realm they, 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 they attack you from. Because the tangibility of your soulish reality is in another dimension. You don't operate from that dimension so you don't see it. So, so long as you continue walking with the mentality, the un, you can't even regulate it. The unconscious mentality that you are bound, it is speaking loud in the preternatural realm. So even if God wants to help, yourself will be fighting against the help of God. So you are saying help, but you are saying I'm sick. I'm sick. I can't be healed. I will die. Oh. Do you not notice how Satan fights you? The moment they say you are sick, one day he can give you 30 snapshots of you dying. He's trying to reprogram you. Because the moment you agree in your thought, you have aligned with him. So there's nothing God can do for you. The moment you are sick, you every time you sleep, every time you close your eye, you are just seeing death. Death. Sometimes you even imagine how people will come to your barrier, the things they are telling your brothers and sisters. You see how they are telling your brother that sorry, you hi, God we help. If the devil is just but Jesus said, Take no thoughts. Take no thoughts. Take no thoughts. Because as you keep imagining it and visualizing it, a point comes, you speak it. The moment you speak it, you have taken it. So Jesus said, Take no thoughts. He went to the fig tree, and the fig tree had no fruit. And the Bible said, Jesus answered. Oga, when were you talking before you answered? There was a communication in the mind. He said, Jesus answered the fig tree. He said, No man shall eat of you thereof. And nothing happened. But the apostles watched. You know, those guys were critical people. <laughs> it's here in Africa that nothing happened, and then you just assume by. Don't respect the man of God. Or God follow truth. So that you will help your life. When they came back the next day, I, I, I'm sure there were trees around. Peter said, Master, this is the same fig tree you cursed yesterday. So as they were coming back, if the fig tree was not dry, Peter would say, eh, Sir, this fig tree is still held you. What, what, what? You know, these guys are strange people. Jesus said, Lazarus, sleep it. Let's go and wake him. They now say, ah, If he's asleep, you wake up now. Jesus said, ah, Lazarus is dead. I'm going to wake him. Thomas looked at Jesus. He said, let's go and die with him. <laughs> he couldn't understand how, how you're going to raise the dead. So these guys were objective people. Do you understand? And they were raw. The way they were raw. But they followed very closely. You need to eat these scriptures. Chew it every day. Some of us can travel, go stay somewhere for two weeks, waiting for a man of God to come and say you are healed. <laughs> There are more than 50 places where the scriptures say you are healed. If you dwell there for long, a time will come when as you are taking your bath, then you will hear the, the scripture will now have a voice. You see, have you not noticed that if you don't have the raw material of the logos in you, rema will be scarce. I know a lot of people that say, I don't hear God. You can't hear God because God, uh, God amplifies the logos. The rema is the logos spoken. The living word spoken is what we call the rema. The rema is the amplification of the written word. So if the written word is cast in you, the, the rema will be hard. It will be difficult. Because that's what the Holy Ghost broods on. The Bible said, huh, in John chapter 1, from verse 12 to 14, it said, as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. He said, they that believe on his name. And he said, and we beheld him in verse 16. He said, The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Look at what was happening. Everybody knew he was the Logos, torn flesh. But the ones that beheld him, a point came, they didn't see the Logos. A point came, they didn't see flesh anymore. They began to see the glory. And anybody that sees the glory, 2 Corinthians 3 18 says, He's changed. 
So most of us, we just flip through. We see the logos. And then we go back. That's why nothing happens. He said, they that beheld... They looked at him. They monitored him closely. A point came, they didn't see the logos anymore. A point came, they didn't see the word made flesh. They began to see the glory. He said, full of grace and truth. And they didn't stop there. He said, of his fullness have we all received. Because the man that sees it has the right to receive. Very simple scriptures, but it can change your life. It's not every time we come, we talk mysteries. Sometimes the most mysterious things are hid in simple, simple things. That's why he said, don't allow the devil corrupt you by the subtlety. The subtlety of the devil. He will corrupt you the way he beguiled Eve. Have you not seen people that have challenge, but they don't, they don't, they don't find out what God said? I was tempted to go a lot of places because I had the opportunity to meet most people. But I've received many words in the past. At best, they were seeds in my spirit. It is what I do with them that will determine the extent to which they will manifest. How much time have you given to the world? A time comes when you hold the word ransom. This is what you said. Bring it to pass. The one you walk with every day is not the mystery. It's not those high things about the angelic realm, the angelic ranking, the dimensions of glory. No, you don't walk with that one every day. The little, little ones that you need for everyday life are the ones you despise. That's why most times you want to take decision. You need 30 people to advise you. Because the instruction of the word is not there. And even the Holy Ghost can't help you. The Bible said, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truths. And Jesus said, I am the way, the, the truth, and the life. So when he's talking about guiding you into all truth, he's talking about guiding you into the multifaceted dimensions of Jesus. But most times there's scarcity. There's deficiency. The healing you are looking for is not with a man. It is easier to receive healing by faith than by the anointing. There are different, you know, Barry told us a story here. About a man that uh, had a challenge, he, 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 he trespassed a, 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 a witch kovu. And then the lady tried to save her, went to the village. He burnt the hanky. And then if you do that, you will die. They will invoke something and death sentence will come on you. And then when the lady saw that the, the man was going to die, she quickly rushed to the village with the spirit. And spoke with the person that initiated and the person said, Go back quickly, do like this, do like this, do like this. When the lady came back, there were some prayer warriors there. But the, the thing is, they were generating something, but the strength of the anointing was not sufficient to address the challenge. The lady said, Wait, let me do something. The prayer warriors prayed the man to death quietly. They didn't have the power to challenge what was wrong with the person. Because when you operate by the anointing, there are a lot of protocols involved. The power of God can be here. The measure that will reach you is the one I can conduct. If I conduct what is beyond my capacity, myself will be slain. It's just like electricity release and then the vote is too high. The wire will melt. You can't conduct it. So there are lots of limitations in trusting God for healing by the anointing. And if you look around, honestly, there are few people that can command that thing in a very large voltage. Have you not seen meetings where 400 people go under the power? 10 are healed. It's easy to come. See, that it's, in different, it's in different intensities. But the easiest thing to do is to go to Jesus. And the Jesus you see today is his word. There is not one person Jesus turned back. Not one. If you go to Jesus, he won't tell you it's because of your ancestors. Everybody Jesus healed, all of them were in sin. You know, there are lots of theories now that uh, uh, sin chokes the power of God. And that uh, ancestral patterns. When you go to Jesus, those things don't stand. They don't stand. And if sin chokes the power of God, you wouldn't have been saved. Because you were not just in sin, yourself was a sinner. You yourself was seen. 
But you were changed. You were converted with ease. Because you went to Jesus. The same way if you have a challenge, if you can find the word for your challenge, your challenge will vanish like the wind. But the last thing we get to is the word of God. People go to wait for men of God for two weeks. They sleep on the mat outside. But if you tell them to fast and pray for seven days for a healing, they will never do that. John Austin, Joel Austin's father, the wife was sick. All the healing ministers in the world, the Kenneth Higgins, the Ora Roberts, they ministered to her, nothing happened. The doctor gave her three days to live. And the woman went, got 40 scriptures about healing, and she sat on them. And she began to confess those scriptures to herself from morning to night. Those three days passed, she was alive for many more years. Many more years she was alive. A point came when her husband was an apostle. John Austin was an apostle of power. Had many friends that were known global healing evangelists. The wife was dying. Until she took the responsibility, sat on the world, and began to confess the world to herself. You need to wake up and begin to do business with the word of God. A point will come, you discover your destiny depends on it. I was listening with Barista the other day, and we were wondering about this covering, this doctrine of covering, spiritual covering. How can you be under a cover and certain things happen? And then the Lord began to help us. That even these men you call cover, most of them collide. <laughs> even they, they collide with things that are threatening to, to take off their life. <laughs> The man, you know, maybe you're under a cover and you had an accident. And you say, ah, but my spiritual father says I should travel. Oh God, even your spiritual father is colliding with accident. <laughs> but what, what keeps him is what he knows. It's his intimacy with Jesus. This is not to talk down on spiritual covering, but this is to tell you that there is a place in God for you. And you must find it. You must find it because your destiny will depend on it. Your destiny will depend on it. Healing is already in your spirit. God has given you Jesus and everything he has. So ask yourself now that you are praying, what else has he to give you? If you come to me now and I say, okay, I give you myself. Everything I own belongs to you. And then you still come and say, give me this one. Oh God, I am bigger than that thing. God is more impressed when we exercise faith. That's why he said that just shall live by faith. But you cannot exercise faith when you don't have a scripture you are standing on. You feed yourself, you get yourself choked with the word of God until in the midst of challenge, the word of God begins to speak. That's what you call the rhema. As you look upon it, the word will begin to, begin to change your mentality. It will begin to change your mentality and ultimately it will make you become like Jesus. There are certain people that they say they have faith, they've exercised faith, it didn't work. There are a few things you also need to know. For example, in the principle of faith, you don't talk to God about the challenge. You command the challenge. You say, if you believe, you will say unto this mountain. All the mountains in your life, how many have you spoken to before? These things are simple. But they determine the orientation of the power of God. You have a challenge with headache. And all through the night, you lay down, you are begging God about the headache. But you say, you speak to the challenge. It's just like I come to this meeting now. Somebody is sick. And then I come, I say, Jesus, come and heal this person. Then then what am I doing here? He sent me here to represent him. So it is not the time to go and call him, say, come and heal this. That's why I'm here. It's just like these guys, these traffic wardens on the street. You know, they don't have any power in themselves. What they function with is authority. So the guy wants to stop a car. He now said, the government of Nigeria, come now and stop this car. The government. 
<laughs> because that is on uniform and that he has a badge is a sign that he's certified. So when he lifts his hand, it's the government that is lifted. He doesn't need to start explaining himself. If you don't know, collide with him, then you will know somewhere else. He said, say to these mountains, you have many mountains in your life. How many have you talk, spoken to? Simple principles that we practice. And as you practice it every day, your faith begins to grow. You so you can see somebody who is fat. And then another person is not so fat, but he gyms. You know, that guy that is fat has more muscles. But his muscles are not exercised. So the guy that gym, if he slap him once, the fat man will begin to cry. And you will come and advise him, say, Ah, Oga, why are you they crying now? You know, those days when we were in primary school, you see all these big tata, they will come like this with their big shirt, say, I will deal with you. <laughs> you see one guy that used to push truck every day to fetch water from the river. He has exercised his muscles. <laughs> then, when you see the size of the tata, he wants to fight this guy that push truck every day as he close from two by before he eat. He must first of all bring home two trucks of water. And this tata guy that comes to lie down and say, give me egg. Because even the way they talk, I will deal with you today. <laughs> me? Not me they talk. I me? Not me? I go. <laughs> then you, see, you see one tiny guy on the ground dealing with one fat. The, the difference is not the muscles. The fat guy has more muscles, but this other guy, his muscles are exercised. You talk to the mountain every day. You begin with headache. I command you go. It may take one week. Keep at it. A time will come, you will command cancer. But if you don't begin, you will never grow with God. If you like, pray all your life. You will develop sight in the spirit. You will develop capacity. You will develop all the things you need to get, but they will not be exercised. Just like the prophetic. God will be giving you things. You have. You come to a place, you have. This, you just begin to discern certain things. You sense certain things. You shake people, you sense certain things. You don't exercise it. The prophetic energy will never grow. I was with my friend. The guy will tie his face and he will hold you and say, this is Benedict. He was doing it. He will fail. He will do it again. He will hold you and say, come there are four people in your family. John, Peter, who were laughing at him, say, come on there. He was picking it, missing it, picking it. Because the voice of God is a perpetual continuum. That's what you need to know. The spirit realm is a continuum. All of the realities are already there. How much of it you can pick is how well you have streamlined your senses. A time came, you will call the guy on phone. He will tell you about your grandfather before he tells you about your father and then begin to tell you about yourself. He exercised it. I am here till today. We are still sensing things around. We, we, we don't exercise. And the calamity with it is that after a while, the whole world will now know you. Then that time you can't exercise it again. Because if you fail that time, it's king size error. He made all his errors in 10 years. Now he, on phone, he, he gives national prophecies. Now we are now preaching on the pulpit. If I come here now and say, Kai, I see John. And you say, no, I don't have any John in my family. My, 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 my prophetic ministry has ended. <laughs> you exercise. Paul said, when ye ought to be teachers, you have need of being taught the first principles of the oracles of God. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14. He said, but strong meat, it belongs to them who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern are your senses exercised? Speak to the mount. A time will be when you start talking, nothing happens. Keep talking. Because the way to receive is not just by the faith declaration. He say, be not slothful. Hebrews 6.12 But followers of them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. You are doing it, it's not moving. Keep at it. Keep at it. A time will come, your family, they'll have a problem. All you need is to speak the word only. It's to speak the word only. Paul was, he was marveling. He said, how come? How, how did Abraham enter into all of these dimensions of God? Ah, Abraham, our father, what did he find? And then he downed on him. He said, he found the faith of God. The faith that collect those things that be not as though they were. 
When God showed up in Genesis 1, the place was full of darkness. God never mentioned darkness, not once. It was Moses that entered into the beginning by, prophet, by the prophetic anointing and told us the earth was full of darkness. If you heard the story from the side of God, you would never have known darkness because God will never mention it. When God came, he looked at it. His spirit hovered on the water and said, let there be light. If it was God that told the story, you would know darkness because what he wanted to see was light and he kept talking light. Let there be light. Let there be light. That's what I want. Well, I don't have time to narrate. <laughs> Some of us have told 1,000 people that I'm sick. But we have never told the sickness, leave. In Isaiah 33 verse 24, he said, let no one inhabitant of that city say, I am sick. In Joel 3.10, he said, let the weak say, I am strong. He acknowledged that you are weak. He said, but say, I am strong. That's an instruction. Let the weak say, I am strong. You are weak, yes. Nobody is arguing it. But he say, you say, I am strong. That's not denial of fact. That is holding on to the word of God. He said, when men are cast down. He didn't say, when men say there's a cast down. He said, when men, men are actually cast down. He said, but you say, there's a lifting up. Because if you follow them to talk casting down, you will go down. They are principles of faith. You come, everybody that come, about oh this business, know the work, oh, this business. You don't know you are emitting energy, negative energy. And then you go and need them, Father, make this business work. You come to the business and you are telling the business, this business, no go work, oh, this business, no the work, oh, Father, Father. <laughs> you need to practice. That's how you develop your faith for it to work. You speak to the mountain. And when you speak to the mountain, the next thing to do is to act in the direction of your utterance. If you say, I am not sick, then you begin to act well. <laughs> he said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. When you take steps of faith, then God, His omnipotence, turns in your direction. Smith Wiggles was saying, God can elude a million people and come to the one man that wants to believe. They know these things. See, the great men, they know these things. Go for their meetings. They don't preach mystery. They'll tell you about unconditional forgiveness. They'll tell you about the love of God. They'll tell you about new creation reality. That's all they preach. I've attended their meetings. Reinhard Bonke, Reverend Chris Akilome, Andrew Womack, Benny Him. Those are the things they teach. That's what we make you. Yes, if God gives you the mantle to shape a generation, you can come and instruct them. So when you hear people like Apostle talking mystery, that is his office. Because the hallmark of the apostolic ministry is not just the manifestation of signs and wonders. The hallmark of the apostolic ministry is the ability to enter into the mind of God and find out the things he's doing in different dispensations. And through the sacrifice of alignment, to trap the grace that is needed to push the church into that operation. That's the hallmark of the apostolic ministry. So if God wants to move into the prosperity phase now, an apostle will enter into the mind of God and come and tell the church, God is bringing prosperity. And then he will tell you what to do to enter into prosperity. So he will bring the church into prosperity. That's why the apostles are saddled with mysteries. Paul said we are servants of God, therefore we are stewards of the mysteries of Christ. But it's not for everybody. You see the apostle talking about revival, revival, revival now. You are not seeing it yet. They have entered the mind of God. They know that's the next thing God wants to do. That's the hallmark of the apostolic ministry. And as they are teaching people, they will tell you the strategy is prayer. Stay in the place of prayer until your soul crack. Stay in the prayer until you gain ascendance in the spirit and you are numbered in the army. Something is coming. Something is coming. So everywhere you hear him talking revival, that is his office that is driving him. But while the church is entering there, you need faith on everyday living. Everyday living, you need faith for it. So you dwell. When you speak, you go in the direction of your word. And the most heaviest molecule in this operation is to believe what you have said. That's the hardest part. Because you can stand up now and say, I'm okay, I'm fine. But your mind is saying something else. 
You see, there are two sets of people Jesus rebuked in his healing ministry. There are two sets of people. He frowned so much at them, he couldn't even hold it. The first are those who could not believe. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 17, you know, Jesus went in verse 2, he went to the mountain where he prayed, he was transfigured. The Bible said his raiment shone like the sun and all of that. And then before he came down, somebody brought his child to the apostles on the ground to cast the, the demon out and they couldn't. And Jesus came. And the man, well, the man was, uh, you know, those days I noticed that they were blonde people. It's like they didn't have so much of cuts in their day. Uh, when Jesus came, imagine if there were 12 disciples, 3 went up, so 9 were left. Imagine 9 people laboring with your son for hours. And then Jesus comes, instead of you to show clemency, at least, respect, don't, make, don't embarrass these guys. Uh, the man came and said, well, uh, my son is demonized. And I gave him to your disciples and they couldn't cast the demon out. Ah, ah, okay. Must you embarrass us before? <laughs> ah, and Jesus came, Jesus was provoked. He said, you perverse generation. Perverse. He was bittered and bittered. How is it that you can't believe? In verse 17, he, he, they were, he, he called them a perverse generation. So one set that Jesus rebuked and was vexed with are unbelieving believers. So when you are struggling with believing, don't think God is pitying you. He has put everything in place for you to believe. God is vexed when we can't believe. They came back to him in verse 20. Why couldn't we cast him out? They say it's because of your unbelief. So unbelief is one thing that chokes the power of God. Because you need to know that as you are confessing and you are acting, it's not positive thinking. What you are confessing is what an immortal spirit have uttered. You are confessing it because you know that the I am that I am was the one that uttered it. So you are anchoring your faith not on positive thinking but on the utterance of a spirit that is eternal. Your pronouncements are trust statements that you are making because you have known that that spirit never fails. His words are eternal. It's not positive thinking. But Jesus frowned at them because of their unbelief. And there are two things that causes unbelief. One is uncertainty. And the second one is doubt. Uncertainty is, is a function of... Um, What's the word now? Lack of assurance. Lack of focus. Lack of a resolute conclusion. So you, you think it may be this. You think it may be this. So you don't really know where to stand. And those are the type of people that the Bible said they should never expect that they will receive anything from God. He said they waver. He said him that wavered. Like a wave of the sea. So that creates unbelief. So you need to settle down and find out what did God really say about this matter. And the second thing is, is doubt. Doubt is caused by ignorance. When you don't know at all, then you cannot exercise your faith. You know those days they told us that there are evil spirits in the dark. So when they carry light, you will be acting as if you are strong. Then they now say, um, uh, bring knife from outside. <laughs> bring knife. Where will I follow? And this knife from outside, you have to cross over to the kitchen outside. That's where you will see Bahala. Because there is ignorance. <laughs> so any area of your life where there is ignorance, you cannot command the power of God. I told you, he said he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. But it's through the knowledge. Of him that has called you to glory and to virtue. So unbelief is one thing Jesus frowns at. And he's frowning at it today. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Hebrews 13 verse 8. If he frowned at it yesterday, he's frowning at it today. Some of us come with all kinds of lamentation. And we think God is impressed. You are wasting your time. He will not even answer you. He's big. He doesn't have anything to prove. He has given you his word. Master it and follow him. If you don't find it, go and look for a preacher. 
If you discover in eternity, it's unfortunate. He doesn't prove himself. And when Job foolishly challenged God, he came, he said, who is this again, that darkened counsel by word without knowledge? Oh God, you don't challenge this being. See, what you are going through, I weaved it into the foundation of creation. All you need to do is to be furnished with understanding so that you can walk in alignment. God frowns at unbelief. And the second thing God frowns at is the traditions of men. That's the worst. He said, you have made the word of God, the commandment of God of non-effect because of your traditions. That's the one that chokes us the most. Matthew 15 verse 6. Mark 7 verse 13. You have, you have made the word of God of non-effect. You come to a place. God is there. His power is there. But you are waiting for atmosphere. You say, you know, the atmosphere has been dead dry, so things be really no happen. You are the one that thinks things did not happen. The Bible said in Luke 5, 17, it said on that day Jesus was preaching and the power of God was present to him. The Pharisees were challenging him. Meanwhile, the power of God was present to him. Traditions of men. He chokes the word of God. He diffuses it. You are in a meeting. Apostle stands and says, you are healed in the name of Jesus. And then you are waiting for him to finish the service so that you go for him to lay hands on you. <laughs> When he was talking here, he was not just operating by the resident anointing. He was operating under the authority of his apostolic office. He is two times more dangerous on the, on the altar than when he is working with you. That time is an ordinary man exercising his faith. When he's here, he's walking by an anointing. The anointing of his ordination is what he's speaking from here. He is clothed when he's standing here. But you are waiting, you feel when he will touch you. And then for two weeks you come, you say, Cut, now what for now? Come out there. And you don't know why the traditions of men. Even if Jesus appears in the meeting, he can't help you. If he wants to help you, he will first of all educate you. You know, Jesus went to raise Lazarus from the dead. And Martha met Jesus. He said, Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. And Jesus said, Madam, I am the resurrection and the life. I don't function from time. I function from eternity. He said, they that believe in me, even if they were dead, they will come back to life. And if they live, they will never die. Martha say, I know, I know, but at the resurrection, we will all rise. Oh God! Madam, I'm not talking about the end. See the traditions of men. She felt before Jesus died, the power of God will do something. The person now dies, Jesus come. He says, it's at the end. Madam, the Rema word says he will live again. But as strong as the Rema is, the Rema was of non-effect. Because she diffused it by her traditions. She was looking at the end. God is telling you that now you will become a millionaire. You say, thank God. When I, when five years time, when that business mature. Okay, wait until the business mature. You will see the powers you will confront. <laughs> as powerful as the rema is, it may not make any impact in your life. Because of traditions traditions. You choke the word of God. You make a mess of it because of what you are thinking in your head. That's why most times preachers do a lot of things because <laughs> you know that you travel for a meeting for 10 hours and then it's one night. If certain things don't happen, you will lose credibility because the people, they, 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 say, they, they know the power of God to be somehow. You know, people have to be screaming and fall down. If people scream and fall down, even if nothing happens, no wahala. Thank God you have saved your face. So ministers do all kinds of things for people. But if you check the scriptures, there are four operations of the power of God. One is the gift of faith. The gift of faith talks to a mountain and it moves. Two is the gift of healing. You tangibly change the head status of somebody by power. Three is the gift of the workings of miracles. The difference between workings of miracles and healing is, in, work, in healing when maybe you were sick you were bedridden for six months and then the power of God comes upon you, you are healed but you will still be weak it will take some time for you to recover but if the gift of working for miracles is at work the moment you are healed, strength will come immediately it doubles the gift of faith that's three operations of the power of God and four is to challenge the kingdom of darkness but you can come for a meeting, none of these four happen 
But we say there is power. The traditions of men. You come for a meeting, you sit down quietly. Somebody came and said you are healed, but you can't believe it. Meanwhile, it was the Holy Ghost talking to you. But you were waiting for that time when the atmosphere will charge and everybody's. The problem with us sometimes is that we don't do our praises. I've been under this condition. I've seen this atmosphere ten times, but things have not changed. There's something else. Sometimes we should ask ourselves. You keep doing the same thing over and over. You're expecting a different result. There's an error. You need to practice certain things and do it consciously. John Gile gave seven secrets of the operation of the power of God. Seven. None of them has to do with emotion. Meanwhile, this is a man that healed tw- by Jesus. Healed 20,000 people in one year. 20,000. He raised 16 people. They call them divine healing technicians. They have what they call the healing room. You just come, they pray for you. They teach you the word of God. The way I'm showing you the principles like this. That you have healing in Christ, they'll pray for you. They had 20,000 healings in one year. He handed over the ministry to a man called Corey Blake. Corey Blake is the general overseer of John G. Lake Ministries now. John Corey Blake, he has raised some persons. They record 100,000 healings in one year. They have toppled the record of John G. Lake five times. Their meetings are as dry as a rock. Nobody falls down. Nobody cries. It's as dry as a rock. Go to YouTube and type Ora Robots. When Ora Robots finish preaching like this, he will tell all the people that are sick to join the line. He will now sit on the altar. He will come, he will lay hands on you, say go. And then they record healings in an alarming fashion. Because what they do is that they dissuade you from the traditions of men. They make you to look at Jesus. Different areas of our lives where we have challenges. But we can't find Jesus. Tonight, we will pray for the sick. You will exercise your faith consciously. Not because you need to do something to bring the healing. I told you before that you don't need to be righteous to be healed. Everybody Jesus healed were sinners. They were not born again. So sin doesn't have the magnitude to choke the power of God. And Jesus never asked any one person and about ancestral issues. Go and ask. Go and read the, the, the gospels for yourself. And if there is a special case when an as a devil is challenging, he will bring discernment to the man of God. And he will know what to do about it. In your own case, it's just to believe. And the sign that you believe is that you have come. He said, no one that comes to me will lie in any wise cast out. He doesn't cast away. All you need to do is to come. There were some he healed, they didn't know him. He went back, he said, who healed you? He said, it's one man. He said, I should carry my mat and go. Oh God, you were bedridden for 38 years. You say, one man? You didn't even have the courtesy to ask him, who are you? He came back again and met Jesus. And Jesus said, don't go back to see. Or something else may happen to you because it's a window. You, you are here thinking you must read all the you must read the Bible five times and fast for thirty days before God heal you. He healed somebody. Say one man. They believed. The difference is they believed. Can you believe tonight? That's the hardest thing. Sometimes we struggle with it. Your will can't make it happen. It's just to hear the word of God and align. The devil will fight it. He will fight you. He will fight your conviction. Because the day you believe, bondage is over. I was talking to Akbar yesterday. I said, sometimes the reason we do all the things we do is to come to a place in God called trust. You see, there are places in Jesus. There's a place in Christ. The name of that place is called trust. When you enter the darkness, it doesn't matter. You will walk through the fire. But you know you will not be burned. That's what Shadrach, Bishop, and Abadnego found. They say, even if our Lord does not heal us, it doesn't matter. Cast us into the furnace. They cast them there and the one they trusted appeared. It's called trust. Ha! If you will journey with him. It's a place. It's a place that only people who press find. Only people who 
give up everything, they journey into it and find it. You know, most times it's difficult for you to get there because your soul has been trained to rely on many things. You know that time you don't have money. There are ten friends that come to your mind to call them and ask for money. What you did not know is that the scripture say, Woe unto the man that put his trust in the arm of flesh. He said, Because he, his heart has departed from the Lord. He said, He will not see good when he cometh. He is like somebody that is inhabiting the salt land where there is no water. He said, Woe unto that man. The moment you had need, there were five people, you called them. A day will come when you will be stranded by the roadside. That day will be the first time you have need to call on Zion. But the unfortunate thing is that you don't know how to become on Zion. You have trained your soul to rely on flesh. You say your heart has departed from the Lord. Trust is one thing that is lacking. We have a lot of activities. A lot of spiritual activities, but there is no trust. There is no trust. You see a man praying in tongues for 10 hours. And then he goes out the next moment is asking for help. We don't know trust. Even when you climb to the heights of Zion... If you have not come to that place in Jesus that is called trust, all your spiritual activities will be futile. On one matter, you will stay there for six months. You will not have result. At best, you will console yourself with theories and fairy tales. The people that did wonders in scriptures, they never gave themselves excuses. They always made sure they were the ones that failed. Because with God, it will happen. And if they were to die, God will tell them by discernment. It says some rejected resurrection deliverance that they may have a better resurrection they didn't die and then began to explain that uh, uh, it's because god no no they knew why because they know god the god they know is a, is a, is, a, is an experiential relationship they journeyed with him until they found that place called trust they stood with him there it is only at that place you will stand that you will carry three million people and he say goes forward and you are walking towards the red sea go forward walking towards the Red Sea and he said by faith they walked on dry land he said the Egyptians are saying to do they were drowned it's not confidence it's trust you have come to a place where you know the world you know the technology of its operation you have confidence in Jesus the resurrection even when there are many opportunities you have learned trust so it doesn't matter who can help you you find out from the monarch of Zion you know some people it's, it's challenge that brings them there you heard the story of apostle he traveled to Abuja, looking up to his uncle that was a millionaire. The man gave him something that was less than his transport fare. When he stood at the bridge, he said, I will never cross this river again. If it means to die, let me die. At that point, there was no other alternative. His soul was taught a new language. It's the language of reliance. Absolute dependence on God. If you don't come to that spot, your challenge may kill you. And it's not because God is not strong. It's because you could not find trust. You must learn it now that you are conscious. You must look upon the word of God to educate you. Come to that spot in the spirit where you can rely on Jesus. Everything you are doing, those activities will fail. Those days when we began preaching, there are some songs that if you pick, you know there's an anointing in the song. So you look for those songs. We came to a point where we felt if you charge in tongues, charge in tongues, and you release the word of God, things will happen. Until we started going to preach in different states. So you come to some states, all the songs you know, nobody knows them. So when you sing one, you are singing alone. You sing two, you are singing alone. You know that, okay, song doesn't work again. You now come to some meetings and it's dry season. Then the church have no windows. So air is blowing. Everybody is cold. They are sitting like this. You chant. When you finish praying in tongues and you remove the mic, you discover you are the only person praying. So we knew that we must beckon on Zion to give us power. Power is a tangible thing. <laughs> Power is a tangible thing. You come for a meeting, you finish preaching, then they bring a deaf person. That time, atmosphere has gone down. What you need now is power. You must find God and you must come to that spot in Him where there's trust. If not, your family will look at you and say, Ah, ah our brother now is a man of God. Though. He goes to prayers every day and then you come. You tell them this February, ah, we have been fasting from January to March. And then one day somebody is attacked and lo and behold, you were dead. And then you lay hand and you scream the name of Jesus five times. And then the person is, is, he, he loses consciousness. They have to run to the hospital quick. Because if they rely on this, your God, <laughs> there will be challenge. Then you will know that there is a place in God you must find. It's called trust. It's a holy man of God. Holy men of God. These were people, they were called holy because it's not, it's not an act. It's not a disposition. It's a place. 
There were people that consecrated to God. They came to a point where they said, either God works or nothing. So they said they were holy men. They were consecrated men of God. They were the type that the Holy Ghost could carry. They could carry them. Some of us are too busy for Jesus. You hear two messages and then you come there, you quote the same thing that the man of God is quoting. That thing the man spoke, he spoke from a vote of inspiration. That inspiration came from a government. When there is a need, that government will back him. But you who is quoting, you are quoting from him. When you have a challenge, he will not be there to back you because his name is not omnipotence. You must find trust. If not, your Christianity will be a joke. Everything you know in the face of challenge will collapse. It will collapse. It will collapse like a pack of cards. You can motivate yourself and come share one or two testimonies. There are 150 challenges. Two that happen by residual grace. You, you, you say, no. There is a grace in creation that makes everybody live. That's why I said the rain falls on both the bad and the good. It's called residual grace. When it is the grace of God working in your life, there is a level of consistency to prove that your faith is making it happen. A lot of people are weak and vulnerable because we are not taught truth. There's no trust. There's no confidence in Jesus. And the problem is if you don't have confidence in Jesus, you have confidence in the flesh. You need to consecrate yourself for some time. You have heard a lot of theories, ideologies and philosophies. You need to consecrate for some time. Paul said we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit, having no confidence in the flesh. We are the separated ones. We departed. We detached ourselves from everything. Every philosophy around, we detached ourselves from it. We wanted to find God for ourselves. You can be part of a clan all your life, but in the day of trouble, it will be revealed that you were never part of them. Because the things that cannot swallow them up, will swallow you up. I came to realize that the angels that God sent on errands, they are not emotional. They walk by definite instructions. They walk by the demands of the word of God. And if you don't have it, the angel, your angel will stand like this. A demon will stab you to death. He only responds to your faith. Because only your faith can cross the dimensions. The angel is, is weeping, but he, he can't help you. He will stand like this. And then return back to God. That's why you must grow in God. And growth is not a magic. You learn truth and you practice it. That's why I took time to show you. You learn truth, you practice them. There are times when God blesses us with his presence, glory. It's beautiful. We enjoy it. But those things, they are the privileges of God that man enjoy. What you walk with is the word. You walk by faith, not by sensory perceptions. God is looking for somebody who can trust him. What you call a challenge is not necessarily a challenge. What is actually a challenge is not the mountain you are seeing. It's the voice of God. If you don't have the voice of God, you think the Red Sea is the problem. The Red Sea is not the problem. The problem is whether you can assess Zion and secure help. Because you will see many Red Seas. You will see many mountains. If you cannot find help in God, then there is a problem. That time we know there is a problem. Can you ask God to help you? We'll use three minutes and pray for the sick and take a few testimonies. Can you ask Jesus to help you? You believe a lot of things, they are not working. You keep believing them. God is not a God of evolution. Don't think by doing it over and over, something will happen. Nothing will happen. Before something happens, you must come to another level of insight, of understanding. Because it's only by understanding that you generate authority. God is a God of creation. When you get there, things will happen. I got tired of seeing people fall down. I got tired of seeing people cry and shout. And then I see them with their problem over and over and over again. I try everything I know. They are still in their problem. I now knew that there is something that must flow through me from another world. So I went back and began to check how did Jesus do it. If I depend on atmosphere so much, how will I help the guy in the market? Because Jesus did his own ministry in the marketplace. How do I do it? There's something we need to learn. You know, if I preach, it's more difficult. You know, sometimes we preach here, before we round up, everybody is screaming and everything. <laughs> you, you, 
the Satan will want to put you under pressure to maintain it. it. It's not about falling down, my brother. The people you are talking to every day, have they come to a point where they know God? Have they come to a point where they can, they, they, they can walk with God? Because that's what they actually need. It's a shame to come to church and you see hundred people surrounding one man. One man. This man has preached for three hours. He has imparted. He stopped preaching. Then 30 people still run to him. Oh God. One man. So there is only one champion in a thousand people. It's a, it's a sign of defect in discipleship. Because if there's accurate discipleship, it, at one man will pastor maximum 50. Ask God to help us. We need help. These are the things I practice every day. Because I'm tired of the gimmicks. Tired of the charade. I practice them. Sometimes they are boring, but I give myself to it. Because the ones that I enjoy, I've done it for long. I'm not seeing the result I want to. I've cried in the presence. I've fallen under the power. I've come for meetings where my soul is as if it's on a hot pot. But I don't see the result I'm looking for. So I decided to shut certain things down and find Jesus. married to a pharmacist and then it happens that this man died and this was a woman that the Lord had been calling to intercession to the place of prayer she was so discerning that she literally picks things before they happen but she was careless about it until her husband died when her husband died she realized she had no other choice so she called her friends and said let's pray for this man to come back to life the friends prayed with her for two days and they got tired and they told her it's the will of God, forget. And the friends left her. But she refused. She came to a point where everything she wanted to do depended only on her. So she stayed there in prayers. She prayed until she got to a crescendo in the spirit where her faith was released. And in heaven, an episode began to play. This was the husband telling her when he came back to life. He said, Jesus called him and told him that the faith of your wife has been released. And on this side, we can't resist faith. Heaven is controlled and regulated from earth by faith. Faith is the molecule in time that regulates the supernatural. He said, you have to go back. The man said, no, he's not coming. He said, go back. <laughs> you know, when we pray for those who die here, it's because of the emotional attachment. If the person makes it to heaven, leave him up. If some come back, they will fight you. <laughs> the man said, I'm not coming back. He said, go back. 
your wife's faith must be honored. And when the man was coming back, he descended through heights in heaven. And at a point, he saw angels fighting with some demonic beings. And then, the swords, the angels were weaving, were wielding, rather. Those swords were actually songs. When they sing the songs, they appear as blades of light. They appeared as blades of light. The man didn't understand what was happening. The angels were singing. And what was coming were swords. Piercing through darkness and creating way for him to come into time. When he landed, he found himself singing the songs those angels were singing. It's a simple song, but in the spirit, the weight of that song was a tool of warfare. It was through that man's story that we discerned that most of the things that happened to us were instruments of war. You know, sometimes you wake up and then you are singing a song. You don't know that the warfare you have been standing in the place of prayer for months, that is your answer. The man came back and he was singing. Amen, amen. Blessings and glory. Wisdom, thanksgiving. Ah, no, no. Power and might be unto the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 You know, amen. Amen means so be it. What the angels were uttering is that. This man's return is a verdict from the mouth of God. You can't fight it. So the statements they were actually making was the judgment of Jehovah they were communicating. He said, power and might, they belong to God. You can't stop it. It has been uttered from Zion. You can't resist it. These are tools of warfare. They are weapons of war. They are mysteries. They are captured in wisdom. See, sometimes if you know how the spirit realm works, you will become mighty in a short time. You wake up, there is a song. There is a song reverberating your soul for weeks, and you never sing it. That's your victory. And we rise up. No, no, no. Power and be unto the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The first thing I want us to see tonight is that the power of God is not an emotion. It's a tangible thing. And if you don't have faith in the tangibility of the power, when you have challenges, you will fail. I want you to just focus on Jesus for two minutes and ask him to touch you. Listen. You need to develop confidence. See, consciously bring yourself to a place where you build confidence in God. Consciously. Make yourself come to places where you build confidence. You will need it in the day of trouble. Just tell Jesus now to touch you. The power of God is not an emotional thing. Ask the Lord to touch you. Don't be distracted. I have nothing to prove to you. I have nothing to prove to you. I have seen the power of God manifested in unfamiliar circumstances. But I want you to know so that you will have confidence. You will have confidence. You will have confidence in God. Holy Spirit. I want to pray for your sensitivity to be heightened so that you can perceive God. And then you can begin to interact with His presence and His power. Even when your emotions are not stimulated. Holy Spirit, look at the hearts of your children. You have nothing to prove to us. But you have blessings for us that we must take tonight. And so therefore I ask that you stretch your hands, Lord, 
and minister to us. Touch. Touch us. From our hearts. From our hearts, Lord. Let there be transformation. And then even to our very bodies. Let your power run through us. And remove every plantation of darkness. Every installation of the devil. As a testament of your love and of your presence. We want to be educated in a new dimension. We have trusted in things. We have manipulated things. Minister to us now. Precious Holy Spirit. Breathe upon us. Breathe upon us. Come on, laugh. Thank you. Come, just stop playing the keyboard. Let's just have it quiet for a moment. Focus on Jesus. The sounds are gone now. You know, some people cannot even focus on God for two minutes. I'm giving two minutes for a focus so that you can have a touch. Touch, Lord. And please, don't be distracted. It's not about falling down. There are many ways the power of God ministers to you. Sometimes it brings you an inspiration. Sometimes it brings you an enlightenment. Sometimes it convicts your heart. Sometimes it convicts your heart. Where are those who were sick? Stay focused on Jesus. If you were sick, just lift your hands. Okay, just step out. Just step out. Take a step forward. But I will use one minute to minister to the sick. If you are not part of those who are sick, focus on Jesus. Don't worry, there are not much. If you are healed, if you are here, you are sick, you are healed, you will know. Just wave so that we see your hand. Then we hope to take a testimony or two. Any of you here who is sick will know. Is there anybody here you are healed, you will know. If you will know, okay. You are healed, you will know. That's one. Who is the second person? If you are here and you are healed, you will know. Let me see your hand. You will, as in, there will be a, there will be a visible manifestation of healing. Visibly, you will know you are healed. Just one person. That means the rest of you will have to confirm. Alright. I pray for you. We, we trust that you will confirm and bring testimonies. But I would have preferred it if you are here and you are healed, you will know. That would have been much easier. Because the goal is not just to get you healed. The goal is to get you to believe in the power of God. Because when God heals you, He sends you to heal others. You become an evangelist. Not in the sense of the fivefold, but you evangelize the goodness of God. Alright, in your heart, can you whisper quietly and tell the Lord what you want Him to do for you? Quietly. Quietly. I'm consciously shutting out emotions so that we will learn how to practice these things. Because this is what will make us become bigger in God. I will not ask you what's wrong with you. We'll just lay hands on you and the power of God will come upon you and you'll be healed. But send in your testimonies. Since most of you cannot tell if you are healed. Reverend, we we'll just a few minutes. Receive life. You don't need to pray. Receive life. Healed in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. Receive life. I command the yoke to be broken. I command affliction be broken. I command affliction be broken. You devil of darkness. Out of her. 
command affliction. Be broken. Be broken. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Receive life. Receive life. Receive life. Receive life. Receive life. Let every cell receive the life of God. In the name of Jesus. That's her pastor that she doesn't get injured. Touch! Receive life. Receive life. Receive life. Receive life. Receive life. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Healing. 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 And the congregation be talking to Jesus. Don't be distracted. We'll be out of here in a few minutes. But we'll take testimonies. You will see the outcome. So you will learn how to exercise your faith consciously. You will see the outcome.
be broken. Be broken. Let the chains of sickness be broken. is wine indeed. Can you lift up your hands toward heaven and talk to the Lord? Say, be not drunk with wine daring in its excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking to yourself in psalms, in hymns, and in spiritual songs, making melody in your hearts unto the Lord. You want to be full of God perpetually. You want to attain heights in the spirit from whence the utterances of men become the voice of God. You want to see from that height in Zion where God sees. Then you must ascend. Then you must rise on the wings of eagles. He said, have you not heard? Has it not been said to you that the everlasting God fainted not? Neither is he weary. He said, even the youth shall faint. The young men shall utterly fall. Everything that is the strength of your natural abilities. It fails, it fails. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall mount up with wings like the eagles. They shall run, they shall not be weary. They shall walk, they shall not faint. There is an energy reserve in the spirit for the sons of God. It is riding on that energy that makes us become invisible. Riding on that energy is what makes our ability not to be depleted. That's why you are buffeted on every side, but you do not faint. That's why you are pressed on every side. But you go on and you march on with the flags and the banners of Zion. Because you are connected to an energy. An energy that does not deplete. It is the realms of the immortals. That realm, it does not know corruption. The word immortal means incorruptible. He does not know corruption. It's an energy source that steams from the very throne of the monarch of Zion. An energy source that you connect yourself with. That you move by the strength of God. The ability of God. The wisdom of God. It defies everything that is natural. The angels bow down. In adoration, we join our hands. As we lift our voice, we cry, Holy. What is the Lamb? The angels bow down. In adoration, we join our hands. As we lift our voice, we cry, Holy. What is the Lamb? The angels bow down in adoration. We join our hands as we lift our voice. We cry, Holy. What is the Lamb? The angels bow down in adoration. We join our hands as we lift our voice. We cry, Holy. What is the Lamb? We cry holy What is the land The angels bow down In all the 
adoration. We join our hands as we lift our voice. We cry, holy. God is a land. The angels bow down in our adoration. We join our hands as we lift our voice. We cry, holy. God is a land. Revelation of God. If you have read the Bible. Do you think it's His mercy? Think it's His power? Do you even think it's His love? The highest revelation of God is His holiness. His holiness does not speak about His purity. His holiness speaks about the fact that He is in His own class, separated unto His own name. His holiness is the expression that there is none like Him. When we begin to contemplate the holiness of God, then you understand that the mercy of God is different from every other kind. You understand that the faithfulness of God is different from every other kind. You understand that the faith of God is different from every other kind of faith. There are many words for faith. 
But the faith of God is called pistis. That faith means the ability of God to do everything according to the counsel of His will. There are many words for love. You have iros, you have philio, you have storge. They mean different things. Iros is romantic love. So you could be attached to somebody because of the emotional flings that you have. Storge means companionship. It is a kind of love that we express with our family members. Filio is friendship kind of love. But the God kind of love is called agape. It is a love that is born from covenant. It is a sacrificial, unconditional kind of love. That kind of love is a revelation that God is in his own class. So even the love of God is a revelation of his holiness. He's separated from everything. That's why in heaven the angels don't call him love. Every time they worship they say holy. Holy. Holy is the Lord. The Bible said the four beasts, they stand in the presence of God and they sing that song day and night. They don't stop. Because the beauty of the song is not in its melody. It is not in how worded the song is. And it is not in the tone with which the song is sung. The beauty of the song, it is the grandness of its revelation. That him that sits on the throne is separated unto his own class. There is none like him. Say, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. If you come to the point where you can discern the holiness of God. Then you have begun your journey in the path of the spirit. That is when you are consecrated unto God. You see, you can hear the gospel and be consecrated from the world and separated from sin. But you will become the God of yourself. But when the revelation of the holiness of God hits your spirit, what happens is that you are committed to him eternally. That is where you can give away your ambitions. You give away your potentials. You give away your dreams because you have seen one who is separated unto his own class. There is none like him. You begin to discern what a privilege it is for you merely to stand in his presence. Because not everyone has the capacity to stand in the presence of God. For us to stand in the presence of God is because he came and he died for us. It is through the blood that you have the privilege to stand in his presence because he is holy. The Bible said, Thou, O God, are of a purer eyes. Your eyes cannot behold iniquity. For you to stand in the presence of God, you must come in the Christ. It is in Christ that we make appearance. And everyone that can discern his presence and stand in the presence, the Bible said, they go from strength to strength. They go from glory to glory, from power to power, from splendor to splendor. The grandness of the revelation of the person of God is His holiness. So when we sing the song holy, He commands the highest level of reverence. The 24 elders that sat in front of the throne on 24 thrones, the Bible said when they sang the song, they fell on the floor, on the ground, and they casted their crown. What gives them stature? Ranking and status in heaven is the crown. The crown is the revelation of the authority sphere that you function from in the spirit. But every time they sing holy, they cast the crown away. Nothing matters anymore. Only God becomes the one that should be seen on the scene. His name is the holy God of Zion. You don't know what it means to call him holy. That is why you sing the song and you keep your gate. You keep your, your domino. You keep your ecstasy. You keep your excellence and your relevance. Because you have not seen him that is called holy. When John saw him on the Isle of Patmos, the Bible said, I heard a sound as of a trumpet. And as I turned, I saw. He saw him. His leg was like burnished bronze. His face shone like the sun. And a sword came out of his mouth. A moment John saw him, he fell like a dead man. Everybody that saw the holiness of God, they fell down like dead men. Ezekiel said, I was among the captives by the river Kaba, And my eyes opened and I saw visions of God. The moment he saw the Holy One of Zion, he fell down like a dead man. Because when the holiness of God is brought on the scene, creation bows. 
It is in holiness that is distinguished as the creator. Creator standing before creation. Everything bows. The throne of judgment is called the white throne judgment. Because that is the bonus revelation of the holiness of God. It is only when that throne appears that every creation will bow before him. His name is the Holy One. If you get that revelation, then you have begun to walk with the Lord. That's when you are separated unto his name. Angels bow down in our adoration. We join in our hands. As we lift our voice, we cry, Holy. What is the land? The angels bow down in adoration. We join our hands and we lift our voice, we cry, Holy. Holy, what is the land? Um, the angels bow down in adoration. We join our hands as we lift our voice. We cry, Holy. What is the land? The angels bow down in adoration. We join our hands. As we lift our voice, we cry, Holy. What is the land? The angels bow down in adoration. We join our hands. As we lift our voice, we cry, Holy. Holy, Holy is the land. We join our hands as we lift our voice. We cry, Holy, 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 Holy. The angels bow down in adoration. We join our hands as we lift our voice. We cry, Holy, Holy, Holy. In adoration, we join our hands as we lift our voice. We cry, Holy, Holy is the Lamb. In adoration, can you just submit yourself to Him? Can you submit yourself to Him this evening? Forget about what you know. As a realm you will enter, that knowledge is inevitable. You will just know because you have entered the realm. As a realm you can stumble into, that knowledge will no longer be a challenge. Because you have entered, you will just know. You will just know. Paul said he was not taught the gospel by any man. He broke into a realm. And because he entered that realm, he knew, he knew. There are a lot of people pursuing knowledge. Knowledge itself fails. But a man that can discern the holiness of God is changed into his likeness. The life of God begins to forge from his belly, from his innermost. The grace, the unity, the purity, and the essence of God begins to burnish out of him like flames of fire. It's something you do consciously. What is the Lord? Angels bow down. In adoration, join our hands as we lift our voice with cry. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. A man that has discerned the holiness of God is on the path to greatness. On the path to greatness. Do you know? If not that Joseph knew the holiness of God, he would have terminated his life's journey in Potiphar's house. He would have become the prince of the house. The one that is most favored. But he would have ended in Potiphar's house. But when the offer of iniquity was given to him, he said, how will I commit this wicked act against God? The only thing that... But holiness could not stop him. Holiness could not make him commit anything that was wickedness against God. Even though the reward at the time was prison. 
and he went to that prison for 13 years. He was there without hope, without a future. But he knew the holiness of God. And the day of his showing forth, he was carried straight into the palace and he became the second in command in the whole realms of Egypt. When you follow after the holiness of God, sometimes there is no reward in view. But one thing you know is that the only premise upon which worship is accepted in heaven is the revelation of the holiness. A man who does not have the revelation of God's holiness cannot worship in heaven. You know, not, it's not this kind of worship that we do with garbages on this part of the side of the divide. Yes, somebody comes to worship and he dresses elegantly and the way he's walking, he is all about himself. Oh, he's talking and he's polishing his language. Glory to God. Oh, you are, he's, he's soulish. In heaven, holiness is only on the altar. Worship is only on the altar of worship. Holiness. Worship is only on the altar of holiness. A place where you give up yourself completely so that God can fill you. And you can extol his name. If you have not discerned the holiness of God, then you are not a candidate of worship. With your skill and with your talent, with the excellence of your voice, it does not pass through the veil of the divide. Because the divide will polish, it will, it will filter the very words that proceed from your bowels. It will filter it through the flames of fire. It's not the skill. It's not the excellence. It's the purity of worship. Separated unto God. How, how does that song translate into form? How, it does not even appeal to the soul. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. 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 Holy, holy, day and night. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy. Then 10 million angels just gather and they say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. It's a function of revelation. It's a function of light. It's a function of insight. It's only a man who has discerned the true essence of the immortals. Only such a man can stand on the corridor of worship. Only such a man can access the pavilion of purity. Only such a man can stand in the gate where iniquity is separated from righteousness. It is called the altar of holiness. You have not discerned it if you have not accessed it. You are only running around your soul. You have not been ferried through the divide. That's why even his spirit is called the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit. Separated from every other spirit. There are familiar spirits. There are demonic spirits. There are dead spirits. But this one is called the Holy Spirit. Because he's separated. Not just because he's pure. But because he's separated. There's no other spirit like him. He's the governor in the spirit realm. He's the God of all flesh. It is by him that all things were made. When God saw the chaos on the face of the earth, the Holy Ghost had to brood upon the waters. The Bible said he walked upon the face of the waters. He walked. The Holy Ghost was brooding and shaping creation. The Holy Ghost was shaping, was shaping creation. And when creation was better in the spirit, God watered him. He said, let there be light. Let there be light is a dimension of the spirit. It was furnished in the creation, in the spirit. Even the man that was created was first of all created in the spirit. He said, he breathed, he said, let us make man in our image. Let us make man after our likeness. And he said, in the image of him, he created them. The word created is the word bara. He was formed in the spirit, out of nothing. He was an immaterial being. When man needed to function on earth, that was when that spirit was placed in the vessel. It's called the Holy God of Zion. There's no one like him. 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 The Holy God of Zion. Can you worship him? Indru Malasikoa Baruka Papetome Azunala Kandalia Tibra Matuma Lahaske Rila Komolo Zondra Pamela Kanoa Hey Akuma Latama Ozondrum Bremana Sulekate Ivrina Kabura Samala Tuba Lakaitamata 
Matalate, in Zondrum Bramba Bala Papalu, Riaka Papa Ruta Salamat, Hey Akabo Sapena, Ina Sakabara Tapapas, Hopoma Sakapote, is the Holy God of Zion. Hey, I will sing songs of Zion to your name. I will sing I will pray I will pray I will sing the songs of Zion to your day I will sing I will sing I will pray I will pray I will sing of God, all your problems will just fall down. Because the revelation of the holiness of God carries you into the realm of God. And in the realm of God, nothing of the flesh exists. Anna was buried for many years. Anna, for many years. But the day that she discerned that there is no rock like our God. There is no rock like our God. That day solution came. She said there is no rock like our God. That was why she could believe that God had the ability to alter her situation for good. And the moment that revelation hit her, she said my mouth is enlarged over my enemies. (laughs) My mouth is enlarged. Before then she was being taunted by her enemies. But now she had come to find one that there is none like unto him. And he said, she began to laugh even before the child came. It was inside that revelation that she provided the utterance that talked no more exceedingly arrogantly. He said, for the God is the God, our God is a God of knowledge, and by Him actions are weighed. It is before Him that all men will have to do. He's the judge of all, because He's bigger than everything that is called creation. The revelation of the holiness of God. As you go home, spend time in His presence. And ask Him to translate His light into your soul. Until that revelation hits you. That is the only time you can pray accurately. 
Because everything that rises from you will rise from the altar of incense. An altar that has been separated unto God. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord a shout. Glory to God. Amen. You may be seated. You know what happened? That was not part of my script. But what happened is that we touched one side of God. So he poured himself into the auditorium. I was teaching at the Bible school in the first class this Saturday. And the, the topic was not really a spiritual topic. We were teaching academic writing. I was teaching them book reviews, seminar paper presentations, writing of projects, thesis and dissertation. And I told the class that the last one hour, I was going to share with them the pillars of the faith. And when I shared with them the 12 pillars of the faith, the power of God was going to hit the building. But before that last one hour, when we were praying, I now heard a song in the spirit. The brother was leading the prayers and as I began to hear the song in the spirit, I carried the microphone and I began to sing the, sing the song in the spirit. Sing the song. As I was singing the song, suddenly, the presence of God began to descend. It began to descend. And instantly we were deviated from our program and we were caught in that atmosphere for an hour, 30 minutes. So the last one hour was no longer held. <laughs> the power that we wanted to move in was no longer in view because a presence came into the building and we were quiet we were not shouting because it's not in the volume it is in the supply of the spirit we were not shouting Shh, I told them to be quiet just, and they just stayed a song will come we will lift it we will just stay and the souls of men was being purged was being purged people were weeping people were weeping people were weeping some will stand and just fall down and begin to weep God overwhelmed us He's a person. And his realm has a protocol. There's a government that governs the operations of that realm. What we call spirituality is ability through the scriptures to discern the protocol of life and walk in it. It is not an emotion. It's not a sensation. It is the discernment of the protocol of life through the scriptures and walking accordingly that makes a spiritual man a lot live according to the dictates of their senses because they feel spirituality is an emotion so you come into the presence when your soul can touch the atmosphere and you feel hysteric and fall down you think something has happened and then you go back to your iniquitous living go back to your sickness go back to your pain there's a protocol, it's a rigid part he said, therefore having received a kingdom that cannot be moved your tears don't move that kingdom your cries don't move that kingdom. You only access it by faith. And that's why I say the just shall live by faith. It is until you find your feet on the path of faith. You cannot enter into the kingdom that cannot be moved. That's why we teach the scriptures. Because ultimately that's what makes the difference. You see. Your soul has three layers. Of interactions with the spirit. Your emotions. Your mind. And your will. Your emotion is the most predominant realm of expression. And it is the outermost part of the realm of interaction of the soul. And that's why every little shift. Your first response is in the emotions. But if you stop there. You will be shallow. And you may never know God nor walk with him. Because the heavier molecules of the soul are not captured in the emotion. The emotion gives expression. The mind is deeper than the emotion. The mind houses the intellect, the memory, your thought. These are deeper transaction levels. So when God touches your emotion, you need light and revelation into his word for him to permeate into your mind. So that your soul can be renewed. Then you can walk with him. Are we together? Then the deepest part of the mind, of the soul, is the will. That's the realm of action. 
That's why salvation was not procured in the emotion. It was not procured in the mind, the realm of reason. It was procured in the will. Until you choose him, salvation is not in view. And corruption also follows this sequence. He said the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The lust of the flesh interfaces with your emotion. The lust of the mind deals with the intellect. Because in the realm of the spirit, mind, eye, deals with intellect. That's why the seraphims are clothed with eyes. They have the highest realm of intellect so they can operate in the regions of the holiness of God. And then the will is the pride of life. The devil follows that sequence to corrupt. I will share the word of the Lord this evening so that I can go beyond your emotion through your mind to your will. Then you will choose God. That's the one you will carry to your house. That's the one that will make you study the Bible when nobody is there. That's the one that will make you stand up in the night when the Holy Ghost taps you and pray. See that Reverend Chris said, seven years, the Holy Ghost will come by ten. If he chooses not to stand up, he will sleep. And nothing will happen. And he will not break through. He may feel the tap of the Holy Ghost. And then he may know that is the Holy Spirit. But he may choose to sleep. Even tongues that is our heaviest molecule of transaction. The Bible said it is with your will. Paul said, I will pray in the Spirit. If you don't will, you won't. That shows you the depth of the operations of the will. So we share the Holy Scriptures so that we can make contact with your will. See, the power of God was already moving, but the goal is not to have people slain. The goal is to raise men. The fivefold ministry did not come to have people slain. Do you know one funny thing I saw in the Bible? Jesus said, Who seek ye? He said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. They went back, fell down, and got up again. Say, who seeks here? Say, Jesus, say, I say, I am here. I already told you. They went back there. They were slain two times. Then they got up, carried Jesus, went to kill him. <laughs> so you can come here and be slain and roll like this, roll like this. And then when, the moment you leave here this evening, you go and stay. Yes. It's possible. The moment you leave here, you just go straight and fornicate. It's possible. But if the word of God comes and attaches itself to your will, that he will compare you. He will constrain you. You know the spirit realm was here. And the presence of God was here before we started. Before the meeting began. Your soul only got heightened. When we began to worship. So you could perceive what was already here. And when we finish this meeting and go. The presence of God will still be here. Now a lot of people don't have these simple revelations. So when they are in church, they are modest. They are organized. They are, they are consecrated. And when they leave the church, where nobody sees them, they forget that the presence of God travels with them. So they do what they like. See that time you put that bomb shot and that peplum top and your tummy was showing. And you snapped and you wanted to upload. The Holy Ghost said, no. The presence of God that time was stronger than the one you had in the church. You know why? He said, we are seeing abounds. Much more grace abounds. The presence of God that came to you that time, he was stronger than the one in the church. He wanted to trap iniquity. But because you did not know that you, you are a carrier of the presence, you thought you were outside of the presence that time. So you uploaded the picture. And you led hundred people to sing. The same way the guy that operates in the miraculous in his bathroom, and when he's coming out from the bathroom, it's not because he, he went to cloud nine. He has understanding that he's a carrier of the presence. So anytime there's a challenge, he stewards the presence of God from his spirit through his soul. And he touches the circumstance. We need to have these understandings, basic understandings of scriptures. We know a lot of big things. Oh, you tell somebody, I was listening to Apostle Steve. He said, what is the significance of death? And the guy got up and said, uh, you know, death provides a part of navigation where we can ascend into heights. Apostles say, no, no, no. <laughs> what is the significance of the death of Christ? What 
has brought navigation. So when we come and we don't and you don't hear those big big things that stir your emotion and then you go down, then you feel kind this meeting was there. Those are the things that change your lives. Said this to some he gave to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. The word perfecting is the Greek word katadismos. It means to equip you with light. The duty of the fivefold is to equip you with truth, with light. So that you too can become a representative of the kingdom anywhere you find yourself. Not that you have a challenge in the office, you are calling pastor. And then you hear 10 testimonies in church, 9 is pastor. Somebody was in the market, there's a challenge. He called pastor from the market. And then pastor prayed and something happened. And then they are so proud, they come to church. You know, daddy prayed and something happened. In the dream, daddy prayed, something happened. You are babes. The ministry of the fivefold had not been invoked. If the ministry of the fivefold is invoked, where you are, you become the pastor there. That's how the world can be colonized. Paul said, be strong in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The things that you have received of me, the same commit to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. The apostles don't need to go everywhere. But they have committed truth. So as you go, you fulfill the commission. You carry the gospel of the kingdom to the ends of the earth. That's the goal of the fivefold. But it begins with an understanding that you are a carrier of the presence. Let's look at the scriptures quickly. John chapter 14 verse 16 and 17. Look at what the Bible says. Now when we go for outdoor meetings, we preach or we don't teach. Because there you need to strike. You, there are a lot of things you can't say. There is a mixed multitude. Some believe that you don't tie hair. Some believe you don't tie trousers. You, you can't finish that there. So you come and flow by inspiration. And when the atmosphere is charged, release the power of God. Let the Holy Ghost minister to their mind. That's how we preach in outdoor meetings. But in in-house meetings like this, sometimes as you are led of God, you settle down and show people truth. Even if the meeting finishes and everybody stand up like this and go home, God has achieved His purpose. The greatest power is to have people transformed. I was told that the meeting where Billy Graham gave his mind to Christ, he was the only person that got saved. And many years later, it was documented that he won 46 million souls. And he was rated 55 times as most influential by Times Magazine. That's the highest magazine and recognition platform in the U.S., it was in 2010 that the first footballer was re- recognized by Times Magazine as influential. It was Kaka. And football started at the global level in 1930 in Uruguay. But it was in 2010, many years later. But this is a man of God that was recognized 55 times. At his burial, he was placed in Capitol Rotunda. That is where American presidents who die on seat are placed for their funeral. He's the third person in the history of America to be placed there. But the meeting, he was the only person that gave his heart to Christ. You will go for that meeting and say, there's no power here. This is a disappointment. But inside that decision, 43 million souls entered the kingdom. That day, he made that decision. In heaven, 43 million souls were recognized in heaven. So don't judge after the sight of the eyes. Follow the Lord and you don't know what will come out of your destiny. When we have seen some of these things, then we are not moved. Sometimes the reason men of God are under pressure to move in power is so that they will, people will not be disappointed. But if you understand that you can judge from the Spirit, you know that we look not after the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen, they are temporal. But the things that are not seen, the Bible says they are eternal. Those pillars are, are immortal pillars. They don't shake for anything. They stand the test of time. If in this meeting, five people make decisions, out of those five persons, ten nations can be judged. Ten nations. Reverend Gosen has a, a favorite scripture that he uses. The madman of Gadara. Jesus crossed over the river just for the madman. And at the end of the day, the guy conquered the, a Decapolis. Ten cities. Power is not what you think it is. But it begins with an understanding of the presence. He said, and I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter 
that he may abide with you forever. The Holy Ghost that has come, has come to abide with you forever. Everywhere you go, you carry the fullness of the presence of God. And if you don't have that understanding, when you are alone, you may not be a citizen of Zion. Somebody said, be at your best when you are yourself. He said, for your originality is your greatest value. Sometimes the test of your originality can only be ascertained when you are alone. If you are a true ambassador of the kingdom, we may not know it in church. When God comes for me, he won't judge me now on the altar. The only thing I'm reflecting now is a preacher. But you don't know who I am in my bedroom. You don't know who I am in the market. And I don't stay here for up to two hours. At most in a week, I stay here for three hours. But in a week, there are 168 hours. So even if you judge me here, even if what I'm doing here is accurate, it is too insignificant to judge me. That's why God sees in the dark. Apostle said there are three triangles of the faith. He says secret purity is one of them. Strict righteousness is another. And he says gracious kindness, generous kindness. These ones, they are realities that travel with you everywhere you go. And only a man who is aware that he carries the presence of God will reflect these very rich realities in God everywhere he goes. The reason sometimes we fear as if the presence of God is not in a place is because of our carnality. It's our carnality. Carnality short circuits the consciousness of the presence. Not because the presence is taken away, but because the consciousness of the present is short-circuited. So your soul can no longer ascend to touch the reality in the spirit. That does not mean the presence is departed because the Holy Ghost has come to dwell with you forever. And carnality does not necessarily mean sin. It means being sense-driven. It means operating from the realm of fleshly, fleshly life, soulish life. These are the things that short circuit the presence of God. So when we come into a corporate atmosphere like this and the, 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 the synergy becomes high, your soul ascends because you are hooked up with a corporate synergy. There's a corporate alignment, so you glide at that time. And at that time, you begin to touch things. But when you leave the meeting, you come back to your sense rude nature. You know, the Bible said, to be carnally minded is death. According to Romans chapter 8 verse 6. To be carnally minded is separation from the spirit. To be fleshly minded is separation from the spirit. In Jude 1 19, he said, these are they who are sensual, not having the spirit. The word sensual there does not really mean sexual immorality. It means to be ruled by the life of the flesh. He said, these are they who are ruled by their senses. They don't have the spirit. So carnality short circuits the presence and the realities of the spirit. So you, you find people who have challenge in, in different areas of their lives and then they cannot access solution. Because they are not conscious of the life and the power of God for addressing that matter. You can be sick now. It's not because the power of God is not there to heal. But you felt that you got this from natural causes. So, ah, maybe it's mosquitoes. It's mosquitoes. But mosquitoes were not designed to give malaria. They are functioning according to the protocol of the fallen nature. And that thing you call mosquito, demons can come and amplify it. And mosquitoes can turn to cancer. But a spiritual man judges all things by the spirit. So when you are sense rude, you judge things from this plane. And then you become a victim. But you must have this understanding that the reality and the truth of everything is rooted in the spirit. And you are a carrier of the spirit. So everywhere you go, you interact with life on the frequency of the spirit. The question is, how, would, how is that ever possible? How can somebody be 
in the spirit 24 hours. Because being in the spirit does not necessarily mean being unconscious and being overwhelmed by an atmosphere. Being in the spirit means being ruled by the truths of the Holy Ghost. The Bible said, let the word of God dwell in you richly. He said, you should set your affection on the things that are above where Christ lives. If the word of God dwells in you richly, and your daily meditations and contemplations becomes the word of God, even when you are sleeping, you can be in the spirit. Has it not happened to you that the intensity of God was so strong in your life that you were lying down and then scriptures were just running through you. Scriptures. Sometimes if I discover that my, 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 my intensity is going down, even when I'm sleeping, I'm playing scriptures. I'm playing messages. And then at some point, those messages that I'm playing becomes dream. And then the things that I'm hearing is being acted. Is being acted. Then when I wake up, I say, wow, what kind of dream is this? Then I discover that the, the, the dream I was dreaming now continues in the message. <laughs> they are talking about angels. Angels. And then I'm dreaming, I see myself with angels doing it. I wake up, I say, wow, wow. Then the next thing I heard, Apostle say, talking about the cherubs. <laughs> So when the word of God dwells in you richly, you can be in the spirit 24 hours. See, these are the secrets of men that are strong. Nobody should be so stronger than the other person. When you see a strong man, it's the extent to which his soul is conducting the life of God. And you don't know the discipline these people inculcate. They plant the word of God in themselves consciously. Consciously. Until the word of God begins to speak from their inside. So somebody hits his leg on the stone. And he said be healed. He doesn't look there first. He collides. He said be healed. Another person hits his leg. Jesus I don't die you. I don't die you. <laughs> what is coming out of you is fear. You are full of fear. So even if you close your eyes. And say this leg be healed now. Be, nothing will happen. What you have inside of you is fear. The first thing you need to do is to have yourself saturated with the word first. So that unconsciously what will come out of you is life. Apostle said he was in the bus going somewhere and the bus staggered as if it was going to fall. And he said, Jesus. And then somebody, Jesus, 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 Jesus. They are speaking from different realms. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. If you know this, you will discover that everything, the Bible said, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. All things that pertain, 2 Peter 1, 3, unto life and godliness is through the knowledge of the Son of God. Is he healing you need? The knowledge of the Son of God. Is he money? The knowledge of the Son of God. Is he power? The knowledge of the Son of God. All things that pertain to life and godliness. So every one of us has a blank check from God. Is it peace you are looking for? The Bible said, They that are stayed, their mind are stayed unto God. Isaiah 26 verse 3. He said, God puts them in perfect peace. He puts them. He puts them. You don't pray for peace. Just let your mind be stayed on the Lord. And God himself, it becomes his responsibility to keep you in perfect peace. Apostle said, his dad was sick and he was praying and fasting for many days. And when he was saturated with the realm, they now told him his dad had died. No, they were going home and he saw a poster, he saw his father. At that point, he couldn't feel anything here again. The soul has now been garrisoned by peace. Because your affections, your mind was stayed on the word of the Lord. He keeps you in perfect peace. He keeps you in perfect peace. There's nothing you are looking for that is not captured in the word. The Bible said he is the fullness of all things. He is the fullness of all things. And everything you need for life and godliness is in the word. Your own responsibility as a Christian is to have it planted in you. If you have not come to that point, you are not being helped. If you go for a meeting and 
It only makes you depend on a man. You are not being helped. Because even the man is terribly limited. Under the anointing, a man could be a superstar. If he comes down from the anointing, you'll be shocked. Now, even if you tell him to pray for headache, he'll be afraid. Because at that point, it's not the anointing. It's the level of faith he has that he operates on. So you see a man stand under the anointing and call the dead to come back to life. And then you go and meet him later with a dead body. He will run away and leave you. Because he may not have faith to confront the dead. But under the anointing, he has the enablement of the Holy Ghost. So your surest way of living is to build yourself by the word. The Bible said the just shall live by faith. And how does faith come? By hearing and by hearing the word of the Lord. You are a product of the information you have in your soul. When you see a man sick, he's full of the thought of sickness. He may not say, I am sick, I'm sick. But he believes beyond reasonable doubt that you can't live in health in Nigeria. It's not possible. He will even say, is it not those people that came from Germany the other time? And only two days in Nigeria, they caught malaria. His thought is dominated by sickness. So it's possible. If you see a man in sin, you just know what he's thinking. His thought is full of iniquity. But if you see a man full of God, then you know what his daily meditations are. The psalmist says, how then shall a young man keep his ways before you? Psalm 119 verse 9. He said, by taking heed unto thy word. Thy word have I put in my heart that I may not sin against you. If you don't put the word in your heart, you are a puppet in the hands of the devil. If you like, try to charge and do what you want to do. When you finish charging, you will go back and do it. I've seen people that say, I will not do it. Me, I will not, I will not. I can't do it. When they finish, then they carry themselves and go and do it. And then they come back, they break down, they start crying. Lord, help me. You are already helped in Christ. The problem is that you have not put Christ in you. And the only way you can put Christ in you is by the word. Because the word is not letters. The word is a person. And until the word becomes flesh in an area of your life, you can never see the results. The will of God from the foundation of the world was to save the whole world. But there was no way God could save the world until the world became flesh and dwelt amongst us. He said in the beginning was the world. The world was with God and the world was God. The same was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. So Jesus was the world and he was God. But the Bible said in verse 14, and the world became flesh and dwelt among us. That is when salvation could be consummated. Because the world became flesh. In that area you are having a challenge. Has the world become flesh? If the world has not become flesh, you don't have a solution yet. And if you run to a man to give you an instant solution, you may be setting yourself up. Hope you know that it's better not to deliver somebody who is demonized if you will not be discipled. Because the Bible said when an evil spirit is gone out of a man, he moves about in dry places. Looking for where to rest, not finding one, he returns to where it was casted from. And he does not return alone. He returns with seven more wicked demons. And that's not the end. The Bible says worse is the state of that man than he was before. So true salvation, true victory is being full and occupied with God. And the only capsule through which God can be fooled in your soul is by filling yourself off with the tank of the world. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Dwell in you richly. That word becomes your wisdom. That word becomes your salvation. That word becomes your power. That word becomes your sanctification. He said, God made Jesus to be all things for us. In 1 Corinthians 1.31, Jesus became our wisdom. He became our salvation. He became our sanctification. He became everything. Righteousness, everything. Jesus became. But is that Jesus in your soul? Life will not make meaning until you can discern the essence of the Christ. Until you can discern the essence of the Christ. The reason you come to church is not to make up the number. It's so that you can be made to discern the essence of the Christ. Apostle taught us Bible survey in, in, in Bible school 
And he said, every book of the scripture is revealing and speaking about Jesus. Every book from Genesis. If you have read Exodus and you have not seen Jesus, you have not read Exodus. You have read stories. Until you find Jesus in Exodus, you have not studied Exodus. You have only read stories. And you can speak about the movement of Israel. Until you find Jesus in Leviticus, you have not read the book. You have only studied laws that some people practice. Because it cannot apply to your life until Christ is animated from it. How then can the world become animated in your life? It's until you see it. Until you see it. There is no transformation in view until you see. The Bible said in 1 John chapter 3 verse 1, it said, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed on us, that we should be called the sons of God. What manner of love? He said, the world does not know us because it does not know him. He said, but this is our assurance. He said, when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Because we shall see him as it is. If you see him in any area of your life, then your life in that area becomes transformed into his likeness. He said, we all with unveiled faces, Beholding as in a glass the image of the Lord, we are changed. The word is metamorphosis. We are transformed into that image. So it doesn't matter if you were harlot. It doesn't matter if you were drunk. It doesn't matter if you were demonized. It doesn't matter if you were bedridden. If you can see, you are transformed. Kenehedi was bedridden for 15 years. And he kept looking at Mark 11, 23, 24. He kept looking. He was reading the New Testament. And when he got there, he kept looking. For six months, he was looking at Mark 11, 23, 24. He was looking at it. Until one morning, he could see Jesus. When they got up in the morning for breakfast, they were hoping to come carry him from his room. And Kenneth Hagin took his bath around 5 a.m. And he strode to the parlor. And he sat on the sitting room. And he was serving himself. And everybody that saw him came and passed by the side and sat down. Passed by the side and... You know what happened? They were not seeing Kenneth Hagin. They were seeing the hand of God. Because it was not possible. This is a man that had a heart challenge for 15 years. No prayers, nothing. The word of God came alive. We all with unveiled faces beholding us in a glass. The image of the Lord, we are changed. We are metamorphosed. Where is that area of your life where you are suffering deficiency? Is this sin? Behold. Behold. That's why I was telling you about the holiness of God. If you can see, you become. Transformation is not in view until you can see. And seeing may take a lot of time. You will sit there. And you study it. And you contemplate it. You memorize it. You contemplate it. You talk it to yourself. And you pray it. Until it becomes your reality. You stay there. Most Christians have not seen him. You know Jesus looked at the Pharisees. And he laughed at their folly. He said it is because... They have neither seen his face nor heard his voice. If you see him, you are changed. The goal of the faith is becoming like the Christ. It is only a man who has become like the Christ that can do the works of the Christ. Because the works are not natural, they are supernatural. And until you enter into the reality of the supernatural birth, you can never manifest the works of Christ. The energy with which the work is executed is the energy of God. That's why even the faith with which is done is called the faith of the Son of God. Paul said, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And he said, the work that I do, he said, it is by the grace of God. It is God walking in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. But you must have to stay in the presence until you can see him. We didn't know 
the day Moses saw God. But we knew that Moses stayed there for 40 days. And the Bible said when he saw him, when the presence of God descended on the mountain, the Moses that came down was a God. He was a God. He was not even aware. He said he wished not that his face shone like the sun. He didn't know his face was already glowing. But a God had come to live among mortals. You are supposed to be a wonder to your world. The things most of us pray for, we are, we are destined to provide answers for. I read the story of Pastor Chris. This guy was a vegetable. He was always sick. He said his mother became a doctor in the house. If she sees any symptom, she knows the drug to buy. This was a sickler. He prayed and studied the word. A point came, he entered into the anointing. And then he was healing by the anointing. In one of his meetings, he went, he sneaked from the hospital and went for the meeting. Because the meeting was already scheduled. And the nurse said, don't be deceived. If you live here, you will die. When the time came, eternal life pushed him out of the bed. And he went for the meeting. As he was ministering, the power of God was healing people. And then he, he got tired. So he ran out and went to vomit. As he was vomiting, a woman came, saw him vomiting and said, Pastor, help me. You know, people can be so selfish. <laughs> he was vomiting. <gasps> I said, Pastor, help me. And he carried his hand and placed on the woman and fibroid dropped from her. Her problem was solved by the anointing. But he didn't have faith for his own solution. Until light broke out from the scriptures. And for that, from that day, he has never been sick. Why? Because he has made life and immortality. He has brought life and immortality unto life by the gospel. Light and immortality have been revealed by the gospel. If it can appear to you, you will become a carrier of that kind of reality. That is what makes men, men of wonder. Your ears open. You can pick things from the bedchamber of a king. You are no longer limited by the, the forces of life. Did you not hear Apostle's story? A chronic stammerer. But the first gift of God that manifested in his life was a man mighty in words. When he spoke, the first time I heard him, it was as if a trumpet was sounding from heaven. I left this place with the deposit of God and I fasted for eight months. I listened to his messages for eight hours every day for eight months. And energy entered into me. I did not hear a man speaking. I can quote the same things he said. Because those things latch themselves to your soul until they rid you of carnality. And they literally carry you into the realms of God. When Ezekiel saw the Lord, he fell down like a dead man. And he said, as the Lord spoke, he said the word entered into him and carried him onto his feet. When Jesus came to the tomb of Lazarus, he didn't need people to go inside to bring him out. He said, Lazarus, come forth. The guy didn't just come back to life. He was carried by the word to the door. And Jesus said, lose him. The word of God is the most potent thing that exists in the face of this world. Prayer. It is a, a transaction that makes you animate the word of God. If there is no word of God, prayer is useless. Warfare is not just talking. Warfare is shooting the word of God as a bullet at situations and circumstances. A man of prayer is a man that can animate the word of God on his lips. So when you come into that realm of height, you don't speak because you are full of knowledge anymore. The word of God that has been planted in your spirit begins to come out by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. That is what changes the affairs of life. What part of your life till date is being inspired by the word of God? No wonder you live your life like a slave. He said, I have seen an abomination on the face of the earth. He said that slaves ride on horsebacks. Wise princes are trekking on foot. We who are supposed to be the solutions of this world, 
We are the one running from offices to offices begging for help. That is because we want to apply the antidote of the world to solve a problem that has its root in the spirit. It doesn't work that way. The people of the world can go for connections and gimmicks. We will trust in the name of the Lord our God. Is this sickness that is ridding you of your glorious inheritance in Christ? What did the Bible say about sickness that you know? Is your problem a problem of stagnation? What does the word of God say about stagnation? Is your problem a problem of inability to get married? What does the word of God say about it? How much of it has been planted in your soul? What are your daily meditations? What are your contemplations? That is where your life oozes from. That's why I say, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard it like a garrison. He said, for out of it proceeded the issues of life. The issues of life. It's not life. Because life is already planted in you. But for the realities, the issues, and the dynamics of life to come out of you, your heart must be secured by the world. These things are not emotional. They are not sensational. That is why we live by them. Emotions will ebb away with time. But he said, heaven and earth will pass away. Not one jot, not one tittle of this world will fail. We are planted on the world. It never fails. If the world fails, then God is a lie. Because the world is God. That's why the world is the highest reality in all of the creations of God. The highest. And it is by the world that all things are made. The highest responsibility of a Christian is to plant the word of God in his spirit. Sometimes it is planted in the place of study and meditation. Sometimes it is planted in the place of prayer. Two persons can be sick. One comes to God and says, Lord, heal me. And another guy comes and said, I am healed in Christ. For he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement, I tell you the truth. The guy praying the word will have a result five times faster than the guy telling God, heal me. Because the truth is that God has already healed every one of us. Healing is not yet manifesting. It is your responsibility by the Holy Ghost to cause it to manifest. So the other guy is praying in ignorance. And he may be crying and weeping. He will pray there for ten years. But the guy that prays the word, he causes God to respond because God is indebted to his word. He said he will bring his word to pass. Are you struggling with sin? What do you know about the sanctifying power of the word? Have you planted it in your soul? The psalmist said, how then shall a young man keep his ways? This guy was a prince. He had everything he needed. It was his prerogative to live a life of pleasure. He contemplated all of this bogus lifestyle that was at his beck and call. And he said, how then can a young man keep his ways? Given that there is temptation everywhere, there is iniquity everywhere, and then I have the purchasing power, how then can I keep my ways before you? And the answer that came from the Spirit is that by taking heed, Unto the world. God is only responsible to answer to his words. He said, and they went from place to place. Speaking the word of the Lord. And the Lord bearing witness to the word of his grace. He bearing witness to the word. Granting that signs and wonders be done. It was not their word the Lord was bearing witness to. It was the word. They are both there long, speaking boldly in the Lord, who bearing testimony to the word of His grace and granting that signs and wonders be done by their hands. The apostles were masters of these things. That's why in all of the arrays of activities that were present to them, they did not choose anyone. They say, we, we, we will give ourselves to prayer 
and to the ministry of the world. You go and do other things. You have that luxury. But we, in order to execute the office of the apostolic, we must give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the world. So a point came that as Peter walked by, a shadow could transmit the presence. And so many were healed through his shadow. You want to be a man of wonder, you must become a man of the presence. Carry the presence of God everywhere you go and live in the presence. The presence of God is the manifestation of his life and his life is locked up in his word. You must be a man of the presence. Every man of old that did signs and wonders, every man of old that carried God and changed his world was a carrier of his presence. Some dwelt in the presence of God until there was crisis in the palace and they would go and call them from the caves. Because when you live in the presence, you live everywhere. He came and began to tell the mysteries that was happening in the palace. Moses entered the presence and he traveled through the gate of the presence and he saw the things that happened before man came on the face of the earth. The presence is unlimited. It is, it is, it is a sphere of perpetual continuum. It is only in the presence that you can see the future and the past at the same time. Men of the presence are solutions to their world. And every one of us that have been summoned to this apostolic conclave, we have been summoned to become carriers of solutions that the world needs. In the apostolic community, you don't come because you have needs. You come because you want to yield yourself as a vessel that God will use to advance the counsel of His will, to advance the frontiers of His kingdom. Everybody that comes into an apostolic community, he comes there because he is drawn by the Father. He has become an accurate legislator of the purposes of God. He has become one who is going to be a representative of the things that God stands for. That's why one of the hallmarks of the duty of the apostolic is to plant churches. They plant the kingdom wherever they go. It is not a title. It is a responsibility. When did the apostles' designation change from disciples to apostles? It was when they began to do the works of the apostles. It was the work that announced them. Corrupt world where people go with titles. But they do nothing for the kingdom. That's not the system we speak of. We speak of a realm. A God and a kingdom that is coming. We know that that kingdom will swallow up this world. And we know that anyone that is not standing with God. Will be ebbed away by that fury. That is why we persuade men to repent. Paul said, having seen the fury of God, he persuade man. A kingdom is coming. A world is coming. A realm is coming. It will swallow up everything you know. And everything you stand for is a lie. Because it will give way with time. Only that kingdom lasts forever. The consummation of that kingdom is when Jesus becomes the light of that world. And everybody will live by him. He will become the center and the circumference of that realm. That kingdom comes from the realms of the spirit. Everyone that has been summoned to be an ambassador of that kingdom has been given the highest honor in the kingdom of God. Such a one is reckoned to be greatest of all men that have lived. The Bible said the least in this kingdom is greater than John. And John is greater than everybody born of a woman. Because that kingdom is setting Jesus as the cornerstone in the heart of men. Every one of us Let's rise up and submit our will tonight. That kingdom should drive us, should power us, and cause us to live by it. Because your tongue was not given to you to communicate. Your tongue was given to you to create. The first thing the tongue did was to create. Anywhere there is chaos, you are supposed to pour out the word of God by the instrument of the tongue. So that the kingdom of God can be born. The higher purpose is for the tongue. It's not for taste. If it's for taste, we will live for our appetites. It is given for procreation. It is given for betting a realm. For creating a kingdom. For instituting a legacy that will never fail. Every one of us that is here today have been numbered in that assembly. And if we only give him half a chance, we will see that realm rage out of us. I've seen women that were not educated. That knows nothing. But because they gave themselves to this thing. They come to a place and they uninstall darkness. Push back the hands of evil. A mighty works are wrought through them. Because faith itself is a mystery. It's not a function of intelligence. 
it is the planting of Christ in the heart of man so that the same can express itself through the souls of men. Are you willing tonight to be summoned into that assembly? Are you willing to submit your will to that government? The Bible said Jesus, when he was baptized of the Holy Ghost, was driven by the Holy Ghost into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He was driven. The will was submitted to a level where the Holy Ghost could command. Paul said, I go to Jerusalem bound in the spirit. He had become a prisoner on account of his own will. He was bound. The Holy Ghost had on un, untamed un, ability of expression in the heart of Paul. He was bound as a prisoner. On his way, several men spoke by the Spirit of God and said, Don't go to Jerusalem. But he had a witness. Agabus came and carried his cloth, tied himself, said, The man that owned this, this is what will happen to him. But he said, I am bound in the Spirit. These are not men trying to live above sin. Sin is not a factor. When we speak about the kingdom, sin is not a factor. That's why when the mystery of the kingdom was exhaled in the book of Ephesians, the devil was not mentioned. It is not a factor. It's at this time, immortality has swallowed up mortality. Divinity has swallowed up humanity. Until everything that comes out of us is an expression of the God life. That is the realm that is coming. That is the realm that can tame terrorism. It's not a realm of men that are given to appetites and the things that they can gain from God. It is men that can open up the floodgates of Zion. So that darkness can be mystified and swallowed up in victory. But it begins with the submission of your will. These things are deeper than your emotion. If you can be quiet and silence your spirit from the heart of heart, you begin to perceive the drawings of the Father. Can we be upstanding tonight? Because the Holy Ghost wants to draw men. <laughs> Holy Ghost wants to draw men. The body we always have is the body of time. This service was to stop by 7.15. So it's already 7.16. The body is time. But you see, the beauty is that it doesn't take God eternity to do that which is eternal. That's what the apostle told us. In a second, a charlatan can be changed into a veteran. In a second, a terrorist can be changed into an apostle. It is by the outworking of the God life. You lift up your hands in reverence to God and ask Him to come upon you and to walk His walk through your heart. Walk His walk through your heart. There's a realm deeper than your emotion. Your emotion can travel to heights in your soul. But for you to be carried into the Spirit, then the Holy Ghost must have to dominate you. It is the Holy Ghost we want to connect to now. Not an emotional thing. He cometh and he calleth. He cometh and he calleth. Can you focus on Jesus for a second? Can you focus on Jesus for a second? For once, can you have the Lord touch you and convince yourself that it's not because you felt something, but because something came from heaven? I'm no longer under pressure to say a lot of things to stir the heart of men. I want to believe the word of God now. Because when I speak to a deaf person, he may not even hear the volume. Life must have to leave my utterance into his ears. When I speak to a harlot, she may not be moved by the excellency of speech. Life had to enter her soul and bring her under the government of the Holy Ghost. There's a realm that is deeper than your emotion. And if you want to walk with God at that realm, you must learn how to yield to his flow and to his life. To his power and to his glory. You can now speak in other tongues. Even as you gain height in the spirit. Say so you dearly beloved. Building up yourself in the most holy faith. In your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost.
man into the spirit. You dearly beloved, building up yourself upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Every dark installation must give way tonight. Everything that has limited you from coming into the glory realm must give way tonight. The hand of God will come upon you and you will be carried into his realm. in the spirit build up yourself take the responsibility of entering into the corridor of life Rababondo Poroboria Tapabanas Reska para sendro para nigo sondro para nigo liga pa para ta para tira sala esos hombre caborosco para niras liga pa liga pa liga pa se porra pa ne posura pa na God is about to arise from your spirit into your soul into your body Tama na koba la tamane como 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 soba la tapaboriata Zene, 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 zene. Insa kariko preka fate poro bobomonia. Mamona la kula kalta mata pale kaborata. Riara rina mararidia tababa bolosa le gababa kwata. Ino kasata pila pa. We are ascending, we are ascending. We are ascending. The strongholds are about to be broken. The strongholds. The things that have held you back for many years, they are about to be broken. Those things that prevent God from moving through you, they are about to be broken. The things that held you back, they are about to be broken. Oh mama, sama mate me la mama onea. Ehu akabara sama.
quiet? Can we be quiet? Can we be quiet? Can we be quiet for a moment? You know, I told you it's not in the volume. It is the supply of the Spirit. The Lord is about to bring an ordination upon some few here. The Lord is about to anoint some of us for service. Can you lift your hands toward heaven? And tell him in the quiet, quietness of your heart that you are ready. These things are not, they are not a show. It's heaven walking out through men. The Holy Ghost is going to brood upon you now. And the people that he has selected for himself, his hand will come upon them. It's not a gimmick of emotion. It's not walking, it's not walking. And if it's walking, it's manifest. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask that you stretch forth your hands and touch your people. Breathe upon the ones that you have called upon your name and separated unto your holiness. Now, Lord, look upon them with mercy. Show mercy, Lord. Show mercy. Show mercy, Lord. Touch, Holy Ghost. Look upon our iniquities. Purge them by your blood. Bring men and women into their various ordinations in the spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will become heavier upon you now. Some of you will burst out like a furnace. River of life bursting out from your bowels. Touch, Holy Ghost. Zuma, 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 Meruta Kibora Sindoa, Ebetoa, Presuno Krota Patre Digas, Sasasalida Kayatanas, Enzuta, Enzuta, Enzuta. Oh, Mama, 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 Kaya, Kaya, Kaya. Let's be quiet, let's be quiet if we can. We can. Let the Holy Ghost do His work. The people the Lord is touching, you can bring them, let's lay hands on them. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let it become stronger. 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 It's our ordinations, ordinations, ordinations. Ordinations. A betting of God. Bringing men into their ordinations. Into their ordinations. A betting, a betting. God bringing men into their ordination. A betting, a betting, a betting. Something deeper than your emotion can access. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Walking through the souls of men. Bringing their will before His throne. Ordinations. Ordination. Refuse to be distracted. Refuse to be distracted. Refuse to be distracted. Touch. 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 Let the atmosphere allow the density to increase. Allow it to increase. I'm not shouting. Ordinations, ordinations, ordinations. Let the souls of men crack. Let strongholds give way. Now the Lord to breathe upon you. Breath of the Spirit of God. Allow the Lord. The power of God is on this road. Allow the Lord. 
church. Ordinations. 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 See, 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 see. Ordinations. 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 Touch. Bringing men into their heritage, corporate heritage in God. Ordinations. 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 Touch. Ordinations. 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 In the quietness of the spirit. You see that the, the weight, the weight of glory will become so much. A point will come when you can't hold yourself. You just go down quietly, quietly at his feet, at the Lord's feet, at the Lord's feet, at the Lord's feet. can be taking place that will launch you into a height in God that you would never have imagined. Touch, 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 betting of life, the betting of life, the betting of glory. Touch, 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 Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Power of God. Pata kaborat, zuzu romate kaitanas, irina hadi kapatua. Ezet, ume takira, undo suno kama, rakida sabra na takira paradonska. Let the chairs not break. I say quietly, quietly. Let God walk. Let God walk Himself through men. Walk Himself into the souls of men. Bring healing. Bring deliverance. Bring power. Realms of glory. Enter. Enter, enter into realms of glory. As many as have desired the glory realm, it opens upon you. It breaks upon your soul. It breaks upon your soul. Glory, glory, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory. Touch, Satika Rico Matane and Zora Panikos Perete Kavokan the glory realm, the glory realm. Realms of glory. The glory realm. You see, the glory realm is coming upon us now. The glory realm is coming upon us. It's coming upon us. It's about to arrest us, arrest us into the glory. Into the glory. Can you focus on Jesus? Oh my God. Three of you lift your hands. You see, by ordination, you are apostles. But you may never enter because you have not seen the assignment. The assignment is to take the frontiers of the kingdom to the ends of the earth. The assignment is not to stay close in the cave and forget your ordination. That thing rages from the depths of your heart. Lord Jesus, according to your word, I ask that you breathe upon these ones. I ask that you breathe upon these ones. At the count of three, let your presence come upon them. And let that which is locked up in their soul activate. One, two, 
three. Touch. Touch, Lord. Touch. It burns from your inside. Touch. Like a furnace of fire. Burns from your inside. Take it. Take it. Regina, Regina, Regina. Ade, 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 Ikaputo, you were blessed if um, you were blessed by this video make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend and also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message if you have any question please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you and also if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ ask the Lord and personal Savior I want you to make that decision just contact us in the description, call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon, turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.